okay. preparing to live stream the meeting. Oh, oh. <laughs> meeting is oh, now boy. streaming live on YouTube. And you're like, what meetings would ever get streamed on YouTube? Yes. Yeah. Who are they? Here that- we are. We're here. Wow. Mm-hmm. Hello, everybody. Hello, What's everybody. Up? Chat's up? already going. <laughs> here we are. Okay, everybody. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between to the live scream, the reading of the Scream screenplay, originally written by Kevin Williamson and directed Ooh. by Wes Craven. Uh, if you're joining us, you probably found out about it through a wonderful graphic that was uh, drawn by Tessa on Instagram. She's at Tessa Art, so make Ooh. sure that you go and follow her. And also, if you like this stream, you'll probably also like Andrew B. Feldman's live Broadway Jackbox stream. So. Uh, Make sure you check that out as well. But let's get down to business. Let's go around our beautiful cast and- uh, Oh, we're doing one of these? Of course. (laughs) (laughs) Let's say one at a time, let's reveal who people are playing. So what I'll do is I'll bring your box nice and big, and then it's your turn. Then it's your turn to talk, okay? Hi, um, I'm Nick Lang. (laughs) Um, I'm going to be reading the voice on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. You go first. Oh shit. Uh, I'm Lauren Lopez. I'm playing Gail Weathers. And I'm Joey. R- uh, uh. <laughs> yeah. Great start. Uh, and I'm playing Billy Loomis. Yeah. Get me off. <laughs> Get me off, yeah, please. It's Matt now, right? Oh, it's it's me now. Oh, oh I'm Matt. Oh, you're yeah, still up. I didn't go up. Still- Oh, oh, there I am. Uh, there you go. Okay. There you go. I'm Matt Dahan, and I'm playing the piano. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> My favorite role in Scream. The oh, hello. Piano. I'm Angela. I'm Angela Giratana. I'm playing Tatum. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Let's go. The host has spotlighted your video for everyone. Hi, I'm Corey. And I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> I am uh, playing Randy. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Rose Faith, and uh, you hate to see it. I'm playing Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Jamie Lynn Beatty. I've never seen this movie, but I did my research on props. I'm playing Casey <laughs> and detective or sheriff somebody, and then a few other characters, one of whom is bored teen. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, I'm Jeff Blim, and I'm playing Matthew Lillard's character. What's his name? <laughs> Stu. <laughs> Playing Stu Dude. and Mr. Loomis. He has a name. Great. Oh. <laughs> and and uh, I'm John Madison. I'm playing Deputy Dewey and uh, T number one. And my name is Robert. I'm going to be reading the stage direction. <laughs> and um, I think I'm also reading Kenny the Cameraman, which will be fun. Oh, I cool. love Kenny. Uh, um, Robert, I'm also reading The Principal. Oh, yes. He's just, and he just a little bit, though. And he's the Fonz. Yes, yep. he is played by oh, Henry Winkler. Winkler. Yeah. <laughs> the Fonz. Lots of stars. Okay. Roll back. We're all here. Okay. Ooh. Everybody ready? Anybody want a moment? Uh, yeah. Did someone say they were reading Randy? Yes. That's Corey. Corey. Oh, Corey. Yeah, yeah. Do I need to press gallery view to see yeah. everybody? Or are you, are you doing that, Robert? Oh, okay. I'm going to do that. Um, I clicked gallery go. view. Is everyone okay, saying there. everyone? I got it. Yep. Um, okay. I got it now. There we are. We are. Excellent. <laughs> okay. <laughs> don't get that figured out. I'm nervous. The <laughs> <laughs> part hasn't even happened yet. <laughs> okay. Does everyone have their scripts? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I feel like I'm going to struggle with this. Up. Is my computer playing? Yes. Okay. Excellent, like excellent. <clears throat> here we go. Woo-hoo! Scream, originally titled Scary Movie by Kevin <laughs> Williams. <clears throat> Fade in on a ringing telephone. A hand reaches for it, bringing the receiver up to the face of Casey Becker, a young girl, no more than 16, a friendly face with innocent eyes. Hello? Hello. Yes? Who is this? Who are you trying to reach? What number is this? <laughs> what number are you trying to reach? I don't know. 
I think you have the wrong number. Do I? It happens. Take it easy. Click. She hangs up the phone. The camera pulls back to reveal Casey in a living room alone. She moves from the living room to the kitchen. It's a nice house. Affluent. The phone rings again. Interior kitchen. Casey grabs the portable. Hello? I'm sorry. I guess I dialed the wrong number. Uh, so why did you dial it again? To apologize. You're forgiven. Bye now. Wait, wait. Don't hang up. Casey stands in front of a sliding glass door. It's pitch black outside. What? I want to talk to you for a second. Mm, they've got 900 numbers for that. See ya. Click. Casey hangs up, a grin on her face. Exterior, Casey's house, nice, a night, establishing. A big country home with a huge sprawling lawn full of big oak trees. It sits alone with no neighbors in sight. The phone rings again. Popcorn sizzles in a pot on the stove. Casey covers it with a lid, reaching for the portable phone. <laughs> Hello? Why don't you want to talk to me? Who is this? You tell me your name, I'll tell you mine. I don't think so. What's that noise? Popcorn. <laughs> oh, you're making popcorn? Uh-huh. I only eat popcorn at the movies. I'm getting ready to watch a video. Really? What? Just some scary movie. Do you like scary movies? Uh-huh. What's your favorite scary movie? Casey moves away from the stove and takes a seat at the kitchen counter. Um, I don't know. Well, you have to have a favorite. Uh, Halloween. You know, the one with the guy with the white mask who walks around and stalks babysitters? What's yours? Guess. Uh, ooh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Is that the one where the guy had knives for fingers? Yeah, Freddy Krueger. Freddy. That's right. I liked that movie. Mm. It was scary. Well, the first one was, but the rest kind of sucked. So... You got a boyfriend? <laughs> Why? <laughs> you want to ask me out? <laughs> Maybe. Do you have a boyfriend? No. You never told me your name. <laughs> Why do you want to know my name? Because I want to know who I'm looking at. What did you say? I want to know who I'm talking to. That's not what you said. What do you think I said? Casey clicks on the outside light. A floodlight illuminates the backyard. Her eyes survey the ground. Mm -hmm. Empty. No one's there. She turns the light out. On the stove, the popcorn pops. I have to go now. <laughs> Wait. I thought we were going to go out. No, I don't think so. Don't hang up on me. Click. Casey hangs up. <laughs> She checks the glass door, making sure it's locked, and then moves to the stove as the phone rings. She slides the popcorn from the stove, reaching for the phone. <laughs> yes? I told you not to hang up on me. What do you want? To talk. Well, dial someone else. Click. She hangs up. The phone rings again. She grabs it. Listen, asshole. No, you listen, you little shit. If you hang up on me again, I'll gut you like a fish, understand? Is this some kind of joke? More of a game, really. Can you handle that, Blondie? Casey eyes the glass doors, then looks up the hallway to the front doors, moving to it. It's unlocked. She bolts it. Casey moves her face flush against the door, her eye looking through the people. It's empty. Can you see me? I am two seconds from calling the police. They never make it in time. What do you want? To see what your insides look like. The doorbell chimes. Ding dong, ding dong. Who's there? Another chime. She moves <clears throat> to it. <clears throat> who's there? You should never say who's there. Don't you watch scary movies? 
It's a death wish. You might as well come out here and investigate a strange noise or something. Look, you've had your fun. Now you better leave me alone or else. Or else what? Or else my boyfriend will be here any second and he'll be pissed when I kill him. I thought you didn't have a boyfriend. I lied. I do have a boyfriend. He'll be here any second. So your ass better be gone. Sure. I swear it. Ah! He's big. He's big and plays football and will beat the shit out of you. His name wouldn't be Steve. Would it? Turn on the porch light again. Casey, terrified, forces herself to move, staggering to the kitchen to the glass doors. Her shaky hand finds the light the switch and hits it. The backyard is lit. Sitting in a lawn chair in the middle of the backyard is a big linebacker of a guy, her boyfriend, Steve. Hide and gagged. He's being roughed up, but he's alive. Close on his eyes, wide in fear, staring at his girlfriend, pleading with her. Oh, God! Her hand moves to the lock on the door. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Casey recoils. What are you, why are you, why are you doing this? I want to play a game. No. Then he dies, right now. No! Which is it? Casey touches the glass, staring at Steve. This big jock of a guy is crying too. Kind of game. Turn off the light. Her hand goes to the switch. Steve tugs and pulls at his straps as if begging her, his face sweat and tears. Click. He disappears in the darkness. Casey moves away from the glass back toward the living room. Here's how we play. I ask a question. If you get it right, Steve lives. Please don't do this. Come on. It'll be fun. No, please. It's an easy category. Movie trivia. I'll even give you a warm-up question. <laughs> Name the killer in Halloween. Hello. Come on! It's your favorite scary movie, remember? He had a white mask. He stalked the babysitters. Hello. Come on, yes you do. Steve's counting on you. Michael! Michael Yes. Now, for the real question. No! But you're doing so well. Please go away, just leave us alone! Then answer the question. Same category. Name the killer in Friday the 13th. Oh, Jason! Jason, Jason! <laughs> Jason! Huh? I'm sorry. That's the wrong answer. No, it's not. It was Jason. Afraid not. Uh, it was Jason. I saw that goddamn movie 20 times. It was Jason. Then you should know Jason's mother was the original killer. Jason didn't show up until the sequel. You tricked me. <laughs> Lucky for you, there's a bonus round. But poor Steve, I'm afraid, he's out. This implication sends Casey running to the kitchen, to the glass doors. She flips on the porch lights to see Steve, eyes wide, sitting in the lawn chair, a mass of blood and ripped flesh, dead. Casey collapses on the floor, nearly passing out. Hey, we're not finished yet. Casey reaches up and clicks off the light, making Steve go away, wishing, hoping. Uh, leave me alone, please. <laughs> Answer the question and I will. What door am I at? What? There are two doors to your house, a front door and a back one. If you answer correctly, you live. Don't From where Casey sits, she can see both front and back doors. She deliberates. With her last bit of strength, she tries to strategize. Don't make me, I won't. Your call. In the darkness, Casey crawls to the kitchen counter. She leans up and grabs a long, sharp knife. Casey looks around her. 
She looks down the hall to the front door and turns back to the kitchen glass door as it suddenly shatters to bits. A lawn chair comes flying through it. Exploding glass sprays everywhere. This incites Casey, this incites Casey like a fire. She springs to her feet, bolting out of the kitchen as a shadow moves quickly through the shattered door frame. Casey is back flat against a window, listening to feet cracking glass. She turns and unlocks the latch, quietly sliding it up. You can hear him move through the foyer to the front door. Casey lifts herself up and puts her legs through the window. She holds the knife in one hand, the phone in the other. Casey eases out of the window, fumbling, dropping the knife back in the house. She starts to reach for it. Fuck it. She takes off. Casey eases along a narrow path between a tall fence and the side of the house, going for the front yard. She moves further along the house, squeezing by hedges to a window. She peeks in to see the figure staring back at her. Her face covered with a ghostly white mask inches from her, his eyes piercing through, soulless. Casey screams bloody murder as a hand crashes through the glass, grabbing hold of her neck. She beats at him, trying to free herself. Her nails dig into his arm. She wrenches from side to side, finally breaking free as the hand is inside the house. Casey sails around the corner of the house, eyeing the front door. It remains closed. Her eyes cover the sprawling country yard when suddenly, headlights appear in the distance. Coming down the road towards the house, she recognizes them instantly. Mom, Dad. He tears off across the yard towards them, moving like lightning. The car turns into the driveway. Casey screams, waving madly, rushing by a tree as the ghost-masked figure appears. He moves on her, arm poised high, a flash of silver, and Casey is struck across the chest. She looks down to see her shirt blossoming red. The knife rises again. Casey throws her hand forward. The blade comes down, but it's blocked by the portable phone still in her hand. She turns staggering to the driveway. A middle-aged couple emerge from the parked car. They move to the front door, completely unaware of what's happening to their daughter, only feet from them. Casey stumbles forward, her parents 10 feet away. She opens her mouth to scream, but no sound resonates. She is beyond words, staggering, swaying. The figure moves behind her. The father discovers the front door ajar. Casey is right behind them with one arm outstretched. If only they turn around. They enter the house and close the door as Casey collapses on the ground, clutching her bloody chest, the figure upon her. He kneels down over her, preparing to strike as Casey reaches up with a weak hand, pulling the mask from her attacker's face. Interior foyer. The father sees straight back into the kitchen, the shattered patio door. I just realized I asked no one to do these roles. Um, <laughs> Joey and Lauren, could you be the parents? Jesus. Oh, what is it? Where's Casey? 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 In a split second, they're both panic stricken. The father begins searching the house frantically. Close on Casey, she's dragged by her feet through damp soil, the life going fast from her body, her hand still clutching the phone back in the house. Where is she? Call the police. The mother moves to the phone in the foyer, picks it up. There's no dial tone. She giggles the bass. Then the softest, neatest voice is heard. <laughs> She's here. God, I can hear her. The husband returns to the foyer, finding his wife clinging to the phone. Where is she? I can hear her. Oh, mother of God, I can hear her. The line goes dead. The husband grabs hold of his wife. Get in the car and drive down to the Mackenzie's. The mother throws the front door open and rushes out. The father moves the house when a scream echoes out. That of his wife. He tears off for the front door. The father rushes out the door to find his wife on her knees, bent over, wretched. The eyes move beyond to a tree in the front yard. His stomach fails him. His dinner rises as he bears witness to the single most Unsighting, horrifying sight he'll ever see. The sight of his only daughter. <laughs> Strung up by an oak tree. Her insides on the outside. Very much dead. Main titles. Whoa. Whoa. Give it up for Jamie and Beatty. <laughs> that poor girl. Poor Casey. Ooh. Dead. Poor girl. She um, <laughs> And well done, Matt. Begin main titles. Fade in. Music, man. <laughs> Interior. Me bedroom. Same night. A teenage girl's room. Neat and pinkish. On the bed amongst age-old stuffed animals lie open books. The camera pans to a desk against the wall where Sydney Prescott, a young girl of 17, sits, her face glued to the computer monitor in front of her. 
She's comfortable in a plain flannel nightgown. Her hands are at work, typing feverishly, when suddenly, crash, boom, noise behind her. She turns abruptly, eyeing an open window across the room, a scratching sound. She stands and moves toward it. Sydney sticks her head out the window. The late night wind hits her face as a shadow appears just to the left of her. A hand reaches out and grabs her. Sid screams, pulling away from <laughs> breaking free, falling back on the floor. Hey, it's just me. Sydney looks up to see Billy Loomis, a young strapping boy of 17, <laughs> handsome and alluring. Billy, what the? I'm sorry, don't hate me. What are you doing here? You sleep in that? Billy pulls himself through the window. My dad's in the other room. Right? Suddenly, the bedroom door bursts open. The doorknob catches on the open closet door behind it, jamming it, holding it in place. Where's dad? Who's my dad? Did I ask someone to play dad? I'll do it. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> Billy quickly rolls out of the side of the bed. Sydney unjams the door to reveal Mr. Prescott. Late forties, a severe presence, a distracted man, nervous and preoccupied. Preoccupied. <laughs> Are you okay? Can you knock? I heard screaming. No, you didn't. No? Oh well, I'm hitting the sack. My flight leaves first thing in the morning. Now the expo runs all weekend, so I won't be back till Sunday. There's cash on the table and I'll be staying at the Rayleigh, the Raleigh Hilton. Airport out at the airport. So, call if you need me. Got it. I could have swore I heard screaming. Have a good trip. Sleep tight, sweetie. He gives her a wink and pulls the door closed. Billy reappears. Close call. What are you doing here? Billy takes a flying leap and lands on the bed. It occurred to me that I've never snuck through your bedroom window. Now that it's out of your system. When I was home, bored watching television, The Exorcist was on and it got me thinking of you. Oh, it did. Yeah, <laughs> it was edited for TV, all the good stuff was cut out and I started thinking about us and how two years ago we started off kind of hot and heavy, a nice solid R rating on our way to an NC-17. I found things have changed lately. Just sort of <laughs> edited for television. So you thought you could sneak in my window for a bit of raw footage? No, 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 no. I wouldn't dream of breaking your underwear rule. I just thought we might do some uh, on top of the clothes stuff. <laughs> <laughs> she snuggles up to him, planting a kiss on his lips, passionate and gentle. He moves on top of her, his hands everywhere as he presses into her. Sydney breaks away. Okay, time's up, stud bucket. Billy sits up. Do what you did to me? <laughs> you know what my dad will do to you? I'm going. I'm going. He moves to the window. She follows. I appreciate the romantic gesture. She gives him a kiss goodnight. Sweet and simple. Um, about the sex stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I was only half serious. She kisses him again as he eases through the window. Would you settle for a PG-13 relationship? She pulls her flannel gown open for a split second, flashing her boobies. His mouth drops open. Surprise. Duck. Their eyes meet. In the movie? Share a smile. Get out of here. You don't, you see it from the back in the movie. Yeah, it's from the back. <laughs> from the back. Like, Best but in best scary best movie, best. they cut to a shot of like a man's chest, right? <laughs> yeah. a hairy man chest. Good stuff. Oh, Exterior, school, <laughs> the next morning. Close on a sign, Woodsboro High School, home of the Fighting Bulldogs. A picture perfect small town school, old and charming. Students come and go, moving about, nothing unusual, except for the six police cars, four news vans, flashing cameras, and crowds and crowds of looky-loos gathered just off campus. Sydney approaches the school, seeing the commotion. Four different reporters stand in front of four different cameras, giving four different news reports. She moves past a policeman standing guard. Her interest is peaked. She stops at the first reporter, who is Gail Weathers. Her smart face is overshadowed by a flashy smile and a massive mane of chemically enhanced hair. The small town of Woodsboro, North Carolina was devastated last night when two young teenagers were found brutally butchered. 
Authorities have yet to issue a statement, but our sources tell us that no arrest has been made and the murderer could strike again. From behind a finger taps Sydney's shoulder, she spins around to see Tatum Riley. Same age. Bye, Sydney. Carefree. What happened? They break away from the crowd and head for school. No way. Casey Becker? She was sitting next to me in English. Parents found her. Do they know who did it? Fucking clueless. They're interrogated the entire time. They think it's school related? I don't know. It's always been the first time they've ever seen it. Even worse than. Oh, it's bad. They're bringing in the feds. It's big. No way! A young officer looks up from his clipboard. This is Deputy Riley, better known as Dewey. He's a big guy, 20s, handsome, in a scrubbed clean boyish way. Hi, Sydney. Dewey. Dewey shakes his head seriously. It's Deputy Riley today, Sid. Jesus Christ, Dewey. Dewey turns to her, his face red. What did Ma tell you? When I wear this badge, you treat me like a man of the law. I'm sorry, Dewey, Deputy Dewey boy, but we gotta get to class. Exterior, schoolyard. Later, students sit at outdoor tables eating lunch. Crowded at one table is the gang. This consists of Sydney, Billy, and Tatum. Next to Tatum sits her boyfriend, Stu, with his arms draped across her back. Almost the jock, almost handsome, almost cool. He tries way too hard. Across the table is the fifth wheel, Randy, a tall and gangly kid with no such Billy-like aspirations. A witty jokester who elevates geek to coolness. Hunt? Why would they ask you if you like to hunt? I don't know, they just did. Because their bodies were gutted. Thanks, Randy. <laughs> they didn't ask me if I like to hunt. Because there's no way a girl could have killed them. That's so sexist. The killer could easily be a female. Basically. Uh, that was an ice pick, not exactly the same. Yeah, Casey and Steve are completely hollowed out. It takes a man to do something like that. How do you gut someone? Uh, you take a knife and slit from the groin to the sternum. <sighs> what she asked? Call tact, you fuck rag. Yeah, sorry. Hey, Stu, didn't you used to date Casey? For about two seconds. Yeah, before she dumped him for Steve. I thought you dumped her for me. I did, he's full of shit. <laughs> and are the police aware you dated the victim? What are you saying? That it killed her or something? I would certainly improve your high school IQ. Stu was with me last night. Oh, before or after he sliced and diced. Fuck you, nutcase. Where were you last night? Uh, working, thank you. I thought Blockbuster fired you. Twice. I didn't kill anybody. No one's saying you did. <laughs> Besides, it takes a man to do something like that. I'm gonna gut your ass in a second. Did you really put a liver in the mailbox? I hear they found her liver in the mailbox. Randy, you goon fuck, I'm eating here. Yeah, Randy, she's getting mad. I think you better live her alone. Sydney is about to crawl out of her skin, trying hard to ignore it all. Exterior, Sydney's living room, later that night. Sydney is on the telephone with Tatum. Sure, I can stay over. My dad won't be back till Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Are you okay? Uh -huh, it's just, you know, the police and the reporters. It, it brings it all back. I'll be there by seven, I promise. Casey, Steve didn't even bite until way after 10. <laughs> I'm not worried. Good, because I'm going to swing by by Blockbuster and get us a video. I was thinking Tom Cruise and all the right moves. You know, if you pause it... If if you pause at just the right time, you could see his penis. <laughs> Whatever, just hurry. Later. <laughs> Sydney hangs up, plopping down on the sofa, hitting the TV remote. Close on the screen, a news reporter fades in. The entire nation was shot today by teen murders in North Carolina. Sydney switches the channel. 
The State Bureau of Investigation has joined forces with the local authorities to help catch what the governor has called the most heinous. The channel switches again. Gail Weathers appears, standing in front of the school, her white teeth gleaming. This is not the first time the small town of Bayboro has endured such tragedy. What? Woodboro. Woodboro. <laughs> oh, it says Bayboro. Okay, that's one of the things you were talking about. Okay, great. <laughs> Only a year ago, Maureen Prescott, wife and mother, was found brutally murdered. An old black and white snapshot fills the screen. A woman, beautiful and familiar, a healthy, vibrant woman, an older version of Sydney. The phone rings. Sydney leaps up, grabbing the portable phone, clicking off the television. Tatum. Hello, Sydney. Hi. Who is this? You tell me. <laughs> no idea. Scary night, isn't it? With the murders and all. It's like right out of a horror movie or something. <laughs> Randy, you gave yourself away. Are you calling from work? Tatum's on her way over. Do you like scary movies, Sydney? I like that thing you're doing with your voice, Randy. It's sexy. What's your favorite scary movie? <laughs> don't start. You know I don't watch that shit. It's always some stupid killer who's socking some big-breasted girl who can't act, who always runs up the stairs when she should be going out the front door. It's insulting. Are you alone in the house? <laughs> that is so unoriginal. You disappoint me, Randy. Maybe that's because I'm not Randy. So who are you? The question is not who am I. The question is where am I? So where are you? Your front porch. This gives her pause. She moves to the window and pulls aside the drapes. Oh yeah? Well, I call your bluff. Sydney goes to the front door. She unlocks the bolt unsnags the chain and pulls the door open, revealing the front porch. <gasps> Completely empty. So where are you? Right here. Sydney peers out into the darkness past thick scrub shrubs that grow on either side of the porch. Can you see me right now? Uh-huh. What am I doing? She sticks her finger up her nose. I, can't, I don't want to do it for you. It's for <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> Good try, Randy. Tell Tatum to hurry up. Bye now. If you hang up, you'll die, just like your mother. Do you want to die, Sydney? Your mother didn't. Fuck you, Cretan. <laughs> Um, she hangs up on him, yeah. moves back inside the house, locks chains and bolts the door when a figure comes leaping out of the hall closet, rushing her, ramming into her side. The phone flies, the figure is on top of her as she goes down, looks up to see the figure, dark, press, press, press darkly with a pale distorted face, white and ghostly, a mask. Her instinct surface and she kips, picks up with her foot, making contact with his leg, sending him reeling into the living room. Wasting no time, Sydney leaps to her feet. He moves to the front door, unlocks it, pulls it open. It catches on the chain. Shit! She pushes it closed again, looking behind her. The figure has risen, knife in hand. Sydney pulls on the chain and then inexplicably turns and runs up the stairs. The figure right behind her. Sydney races to her bedroom. She locks the door shut and pulls her closet door open placing the edge right against the doorknob, just as the figure pounds against the bedroom door. It rips open, but the closet door catches in a crazy vice-like hole. Sydney grabs the phone. It's dead, off the hook downstairs. The figure rushes the door several times. The frame splinters, but won't give. Sydney is at her computer. <laughs> she punches at the keypad madly. Close on screen as words appear. Fax modem, 911, send. The knife slashes through the crack in the door wildly. On screen again. Help! Killer! 34 Elm Street. Sydney presses send when it occurs to her. All is quiet. The figure is gone. A fearful silence. She looks around, the only sound her own rapid, terrified breathing. On the screen. Stay calm. Police en route. Suddenly a noise at the window. Sydney looks up to see 
Billy. Her boyfriend, staring at her, surprised. Oh, Billy, please. God. I heard screaming. The door was locked. Are you okay? He's here. He's trying to kill me. Billy pulls himself through the window. As he does, a small black object falls from his dark jeans. It hits the floor as Sydney eyes it, a sleek, compact cellular phone. No one has those. Oh. Sydney stops in her tracks. <laughs> Their eyes meet. A siren is heard in the distance. Sydney bolts. Hey, wait, what's going on? Billy reaches for her. Sydney unlocks the bedroom door and tears out of the room and down the stairs to the front door. He rips the chain off the door, pulls it open, coming face to face with a white ghostly mask. A massive scream erupts from her gut as the camera pulls back to find Deputy Dewey Riley holding it. Red lights flash, sirens blast as car after car surrounds the house. Sydney falls into the safety of Dewey's arms. <laughs> Exterior, front yard, minutes later. The yard is a whirlwind of activity. An ambulance, squad cars, cops everywhere, close on Billy's face as it smashes against the hood of a police car. His hands are being cuffed, his rights being read. I didn't do anything. Sit, where's Sit? Ask her, she'll tell you. Dewey holds a car door open as Sheriff Burke steps out. We got him, Sheriff. Billy Loomis. Hank Loomis, kid? <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> he's her boyfriend. They approach Billy as he's being placed in a squad car. <laughs> Sheriff, I didn't do it. Please, call my dad, please. The squad car disappears with Billy as another car comes to a stop in front of the house. Tatum gets out, freaked beyond belief. How is she? She's tough. Have to be. It's just she's gone through. <laughs> Across the yard sits Sydney in the back of an ambulance as paramedics check her out. Dewey approaches. You gonna be able to come to the station and talk to us a bit? Yeah. What happened? Oh God. Tatum rushes to her, grabbing hold of her. What are you doing here? Oh God, Sid, I'm sorry I was late. You can't be here, Tatum. This is an official crime scene. It's okay, she was supposed to pick me up. <clears throat> her dad's out of town, she's staying with us. Does mom know? Yeah, you doofus. <laughs> <laughs> Two news vans come driving up the street. A big white news van comes to a stop in front of the house. The door slides open and Gail Weathers hops out just in time to see Sydney being escorted to a squad car. I'll be damned. <laughs> Jumping from the driver's seat is Kenny, Gail's cameraman and flunky. What, what? Jesus, the camera, hurry. But it's too late. Sydney is as good as gone. Gail sees Tatum moving quickly to her car. Excuse me? Was that Sydney Prescott they took away? I don't know. What happened Tatum to her? in her car, ignoring her. I'm not talking to you. Tatum's car peels out as Kenny comes running up with his camera. <sighs> Where'd she go? Look, Kenny, I know you're about 50 pounds overweight, but when I say hurry, please interpret that as move your fat tub of lard ass now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Interior, police station. Sydney sits at a desk drinking a cup of water. She wears the sheriff's jacket over her shoulders. Dewey approaches. Did you reach my dad? You're sure it was the Hilton? At the airport. He's not registered. Could he have gone to another hotel? I don't know, I guess. We'll find him, Sid. Don't worry. Interior, sheriff's office. Billy sits opposite Sheriff Burke. Next to Billy sits his father, Hank Loomis, an older version of Billy. Shame for the sheriff. <laughs> it's page 32. <laughs> oh, what, are you, what are you doing with our cellular, with, what are you doing with a cellular telephone, son? Everybody's got one now. Why don't you check the phone bill for Christ's sakes? Call my carrier, air phone yeah. comp. They'll have, <laughs> comp? They'll have records of every number I dialed. They've dialed. God damn it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we're on it. Hey, uh, what were you doing outside Sydney's today? Just wanted to see her, that's all. And last night? Sydney said you crawled through a window last night, too. You were out last night? Did you ride past Casey Becker's house? I didn't. Sheriff, I didn't kill anybody. <laughs> Interior police bullpen. <laughs> Minutes later, Tatum has joined Sydney. Burke and Dewey appear in the door, watching Tatum comfort Sydney. Out of earshot. That ghost mask is sold at both Kroger's and Walmart, neither of which keep purchase records. About the cellular phone bill. They're pulling Loomis's account, but it'll be morning before we see something. You think you get it? 
few years ago, I would have said not a chance, but who those kids today? Damn if I know. Hey, Dewey, can we go now? Hold up a second. He's staying with you? We, we haven't located her dad yet. Use the back way. Avoid the circus. Exterior, police station, side door. The door opens and Sydney, Tatum, Dewey, and a couple of officers exit, avoiding the horde of reporters that can be seen around the corner, waiting anxiously at the front entrance. Look at the car, wait here. Dewey takes off. From the darkness of the alley, Gail Weathers appears with Kenny. <laughs> Hello, Sydney. Sydney spins around to see Gail, standing, smiling at her. Some night, are you all right? <laughs> what happened? She's not answering any questions. Just leave us alone, okay? It's okay, Tatum. She's just doing her job. Right, Gail? Yes, that's right. Dewey, in a squad car, turns into the alley and pulls up. The other news people have wisened up. They begin to flock the alley. How's the book? It'll be out later this year. I'll look for it. I'll send you a cop. <laughs> 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 I'll send you a copy. In a blurred, unexpected instant, Sydney brings her fist forward, smashing it hard into Gail Ooh! Weathers' face. Ooh! Ooh! Gail bangs. feeling backwards, <laughs> knocking into Kenny as they both tumble to the pavement. Did yeah. this happen in the movie? Yeah. Oh, Interior, Tatum's bedroom. Later, Tatum and Sydney lay on the bed. They both wear nightshirts. <laughs> I love it. I'll send you a copy. <laughs> Bam, bitch went down. I'll send you a copy. Bam, Sid, super bitch. Dewey appears in the doorway holding a bag of ice. Uh, I thought you might want some ice for that right hook. Sydney sits up, takes the ice, and puts it on her hand. I'll be right next door to uh, try to get some sleep. Behind Dewey, a graying woman pops in. This is Mama Riley. She wears a comforting smile. Telephone, dear. Who is that? It? It's for Sid. My dad? Sydney takes off out the door. Mama Riley motions to Tatum. How is she? <laughs> Interior, hallway. Sydney grabs the phone at the end of the hall. Hello? Hello, Sydney. No. Mama no! Riley turns into the doorway. Tatum comes bolting out of the bedroom. Poor Billy boyfriend. An innocent guy doesn't stand a chance with you. Leave me alone! Looks like you fingered the wrong guy. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Mama Riley beats on a closed bedroom door. Dewey! Dewey! This is gonna be fun, Sydney. Just like old times. Dewey flies out of his room wearing only his boxers, holding a gun. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> the phone goes dead. Sydney stands there, frozen. Exterior, school street, the next day. Once again, reporters are everywhere. Dewey pulls up in front of the school. Tatum hops out as Sydney forces herself out of the Jeep. A microphone is shoved in her face. How does it feel to almost be brutally murdered? Dewey leaps from the car, intercepting the reporter. Leave the girl alone, will ya? She wants to go to school. <laughs> <laughs> Sydney eyes the news van that's pulled up behind her. The side door slides open and Gail Weather steps out. Come on, Sid. Just a sec. I need to talk to someone. He heads over to Gail. Gail, who sits in the open door, checking her face in the mirror. Makeup tries hard to hide Sid's handiwork, a swollen black and blue right cheek. Gail spots Sydney immediately and leaps to her feet. Stop right there. I'm not here to fight. I want to talk. Kenny, camera, now! <laughs> Off the record, no cameras. For oh, forget it. <laughs> Please, you owe me. I owe you shit. You owe my mother. Your mother's murder was last year's hottest court case. Somebody was going to write a book about it. And it had to be you with all your lies and bullshit theories. What is your problem? You got what you wanted. Cotton Weary is in jail. They're gonna gas him. A book is not gonna change that. Do you still think he's innocent? He was convicted in a court of law. Your testimony put him away. Doesn't really matter what I think. During the trial, you did all those stories about me. You called me a liar. I think you falsely identified him, yes. Have you, you fingered the wrong guy. 
That's what he meant. Yeah. That's it. I think you're right. the wrong guy. <laughs> well, have you talked to that guy? Cotton. Many times. Because the story right. changed. Not one word. He admits to having sex with your mother, but that's all. Well, he's lying. He wouldn't have touched him. She wouldn't have touched him. He was drunk that night. He left his coat at your house after your mother seduced him. I saw him leaving wearing it. No, you saw someone leave wearing that coat. The same someone who planted it in Cotton's car, framing him. <laughs> no, Cotton murdered my mother. You're not so sure anymore, are you? Tatum comes waltzing up. Nice welt, sweetie. Love them. <laughs> <laughs> The killer is still on the loose, isn't he? These murders are related. Yo, let's rock. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry I mangled your face. She takes off with Tatum. Wait, Sydney, don't go. But Sydney and Tatum have already <laughs> disappeared in the crowd of students moving across campus. Gail looks to Kenny. Jesus Christ. An innocent man on death row, a killer still on the loose. Kenny, tell me I'm dreaming. You wanna go live? No, not so fast. We have nothing concrete. This is huge. You can't just sit on this. Which is why I need proof. If I'm right about this, it could save a man's life. Do you know what that could do for my book sales? <laughs> <laughs> hey, interior, corridor, later. With first period underway, the halls have cleared. One or two struggling students can be seen rushing to class. Sydney moves quickly down the hall, rounding a corner, running smack into Billy. They collide hard, catching Sydney off guard, scaring the life out of her. She falls backwards, but Billy catches her fall. <laughs> Jesus, shit! Hey, hey, it's just me. Sydney pulls away from him quickly. Billy feels the slight. What? You don't still think it's me. No, I don't. I just, someone was there. Someone tried to kill me. I know. The police say I scared him off. It wasn't me, Sid. I know. He's called it again last night at Tatum's house. See, it couldn't have been me. I was in jail, remember? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Please understand. Understand what? That I got a girlfriend who would rather accuse me of being a psychopathic killer than touch me? You know that's not true. <laughs> then what is it? What is it? Billy, I was attacked. What is it between us? You haven't been the same since your mother died. I can't believe you're bringing this up. It's been a year since she died. Tomorrow, one year tomorrow. When are you gonna let that go, Sid? <laughs> When my, mom my left mom my dad, died. when my mom left my dad, I just accepted it. <laughs> this is the way it is. She's not coming back. This is this problem. Your parents <laughs> split up. It's not the same thing. Your mom <laughs> left town. She's not in a coffin somewhere. Sorry. It's not the same. Just want my girlfriend. Sydney <laughs> 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 starts to walk away but turns back. I'm so sorry if my trauma is an inconvenience to you in your perfect existence. Sydney disappears through a door marked girl's bathroom, leaving Billy alone in the hallway. He smacks his forehead, pissed at himself. <laughs> in <laughs> interior, girl's bathroom. Large and spacious, closed behind, closed bathroom stalls, line one wall facing a row of sinks and a huge mirror. Sydney enters as two girls talk, each from their respective stalls. She was never attacked. I think she made it all up. Why would she lie about it? For attention. That girl has some serious issues. Sydney listens intently. Toilet flushes. Sydney quickly jumps in the stall, hiding, just as they appear. What if she did it? What if Sydney killed Casey and Steve? Why would she do that? Cut her some slack. She watched her mom get both her. Yeah, and it fucked her up royally. Think about it. It makes perfect sense. Her mom's death leaves her distraught and hostile at a cruel and inhumane world. She's delusioned, disillusioned. Where's God, etc. And one day, she snapped. 
She wants to kill herself, but she really is. suicide is out this year. And In homicide is a much healthier therapeutic expression. The 90s, man. From the stall, Sydney listens, her heart pounding, jaw quivering. Where did you get this year? Ricky Lake. <laughs> <laughs> The two girls exit. Sydney moves out of the stall, catching her reflection in the mirror. Nick. Oh. Exterior, school street, minutes later. Dewey's patrol jeep is parked in front of the school. Dewey shuts the jeep door and heads for campus when Gail Weathers appears, her face aglow. Hi, Gail Weathers, field <laughs> correspondent, top story. I know who you are, Miss Weathers. How's the eye? Productive. So they're closing down the school? Well, uh, yes, ma'am. Everything's under control. Well, of course. You're here. You're not supposed to be here, ma'am. I know. I should be in New York covering the Sharon Stone stalker, but who knew? You look awfully young to be a police officer. I'm 25 years old, ma'am. <laughs> you know, in a demographic study, I proved to be the most popular amongst males, 11 to 24. I guess I just missed you. Of course, you don't look a day over 12, except in the upper torso area. Does the force require that you work out? No, ma'am. Because of my boyish good looks, muscle mass has increased my acceptance as a serious police officer. <laughs> they approach the school's front entrance. Suddenly, Mr. Himbry's voice in amp is amplified through intercoms across campus via the PA system. They stop to listen. Hey, your attention, please. Due to the recent events that have occurred and until it comes to resolve effective immediately, kids, all classes are suspended <laughs> to fur a notice. That's pretty cool, right? The Woodsboro Police Department has also asked me to announce a citywide curfew. We get it at 6 o'clock p.m. I repeat, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, he's cool, and it sounds like we've got a serial killer on our hands. This <laughs> <laughs> is cool. A serial killer is not really accurate, though. You got to knock off a couple more to get that title. Hmm. Well, we can hope, can't we? We certainly don't have any leads. Have you located Sydney's father yet? No. Well, he's not a suspect, is he? We haven't ruled out that possibility. If you'll excuse me, ma'am. Am I keeping you? I'm sorry. If I may say so, Miss Weathers, you're much prettier in person. Dewey starts up the school's front steps as the bell rings. So do you watch the show? He turns to her earnestly. I just turned 25. I was 24 for a whole year. Ooh. <laughs> Gail. <laughs> what? Interior school corridor, seconds later. School is clearing out. The halls have begun to empty as Tatum escorts Sydney down the hallway. Stu appears. Is this not cool or what? <laughs> Stu moves to Tatum <laughs> and gives her a kiss. And to celebrate this impromptu fall break, I propose we have a party. Tonight, my house. Are you serious? <laughs> my parents are out of town. It'll be like my hurricane bash last year. <laughs> Nothing extreme, just a few of us hanging. This could be good. What do you think, Sid? I don't know. Come on. Pathos has its perks. Remember, there's safety <laughs> in numbers. Yeah, okay. Whatever. <laughs> cool. See you guys tonight. Bring food, though. It's <laughs> 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 off, sliding down the empty hallway. If I was, uh, if I was wrong, caught, uh, if I was wrong, cotton. Should be about cotton, sorry. Oh, okay. oh, thank you, Robert. If I was wrong about cotton, then he's still out there. Don't go there, Sid. You're starting to sound like some Wes Carpenter flick. Don't freak yourself out. We've got a long night ahead of us with plenty of food. <laughs> <laughs> You're, right. You're right. I'm cracking up. Ignore me. Come on, let's rock. <laughs> <laughs> Let's rock. Yeah. <laughs> Interior blockbuster. Your typical blockbuster. Huge and crowded. Did you Randy write and his blockbuster oh, get up? That's sad. Pour one out. Pour one out. Sad. I miss it. Pour one out. Shelving returns when Stu appears, knocking the videos out of his hand. Jesus, this place is packed. Yeah, we had a we had a run in the mass murder section. 
You coming tonight with food? Yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> off early. <laughs> you, you know? Oh, now that's poor taste. What? Randy refers to Billy, who stands down the aisle talking to two girls. If you were the only suspect in a senseless bloodbath, would you be standing in the horror section? It was all a misunderstanding. He didn't do anything. You're such a little lap dog. He's got killer printed all over his forehead. Then why'd the police let him go? Because obviously they don't watch enough movies. This is standard horror movie stuff. Prom night revisited. Randy moves down the aisle, reshelving videos. Why would he want to kill his own girlfriend? There's always some stupid bullshit reason to kill your girlfriend. That's the beauty of it all, simplicity. Besides, if it's too complicated, you lose your target audience. So what's his reason? Uh, maybe Sydney wouldn't have sex with him. What, she's saving yourself for you? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> now that Billy's tried to mutilate her, you think Sid would go out with me? No, <laughs> I don't, <laughs> like at all. All no, <laughs> you know, you know what I think it is. I think your father did it. How come they can't find her pops, man? Because he's probably dead. His body will come popping out in the last reel somewhere. Eyes gouged out, fingers cut off, teeth knocked out. See, the police are always off track with this shit. If they'd watch prom night, they'd save time. <laughs> There's formula to it. A very simple formula. Everybody's a suspect. I'm telling you, the dad's a red herring. It's Billy. How do we know you're not the killer? <gasps> Randy spins around to find Billy right behind him. Busted. Uh, hi, Billy. Movie freaked mine lost its reality button. You're absolutely right. I'm the first to admit it. If this were a scary movie, I'd be the prime suspect. And what would be your motive? It's the millennium. Motives are incidental. Yep. <laughs> Exterior, country road, <laughs> night. <laughs> Super Street makes its way down a long winding road. Headlights illuminate the thick woods that line each side. Following behind them at a discreet distance is a huge white news van. Louis comes to the end of the road. It dead ends at Stu's house, which sits alone in a clearing big and ominous, with no neighbors in sight. A huge old home just ripe for a night of fun and terror. From the looks of things, the party has already started. Music is blaring, a few kids hang on the porch. Interior, living room, minutes later. A big room with kids sprinkled throughout, smoking, drinking, cutting up. <laughs> cutting up. A stereo blasts music while the TV airs around the all clock killer coverage. Tatum and Sid enter with groceries. Various friends greet them. Caterers here. Food. <laughs> the girls carry bags through a hallway that opens up onto an enormous kitchen. Stu and some guys are leaning over the sink, drinking beer through a funnel. <laughs> Stu's house on the road. Gail's news van pulls up and parks unobtrusively on the side of the road a few feet down from the front yard. Kenny and Gail move around inside the van. Kenny hovers over a control panel complete with video monitors. What's the plan? Prep the compact. We'll hide it in a window and tape everything. Kenny picks up a compact video camera the size of his fist, guys. It's what? tiny. <laughs> Checks its battery pack. The control board's glitched. You know, we can't carry a live picture. What's the delay? About 30 seconds. As long as it records, I don't give a shit. We're not doing a remote. Gail slides open the front door and steps out into the darkness, not seeing a figure that stands behind her. A hand grabs her shoulder. Gail Dorn stops as she spins around to find... Evening, ma'am. <laughs> Good evening. What brings you out to these parts? You never know when or where a story will break. Not much story here. Just a bunch of kids cutting loose. Hmm. <laughs> then what are you doing here? Uh, keeping an eye on things. Checking the place out. Mind if I join you? <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Gail leans Hi. in the van, grabs the camera from Kenny's hand, and throws it in her bag. She gives Kenny a wink. Interior, kitchen, close on a microwave. Popcorn pops inside. Never widens to reveal. 
this, stew and tatum, moving around the kitchen, preparing a junk food freeze. So much food. Other teams pop in and out. Randy appears amongst them. He carries an armful of videos. I thought we'd make it a blockbuster night. He lets the videos splatter across the kitchen counter. Stu and Tatum dive in. I thought everything was checked out. I had him hid in the foreign section. Sydney pursues the videos. Her Fog, Terror Train, Prom Night. How come Jamie Lee Curtis is in all of these movies? She's the scream queen. With that set of lungs, psh, she should be. Sit. <laughs> Doorbell rings. Dude goes for it. I got it. Tatum, get me a beer and food. <laughs> They're in the fridge in the garage. What am I, the beer wench? Whoa, hey, guess who's here? It's that chick from Top Story. They look up the hallway to see Dewey and Gale standing in the foyer. Shit, Dewey? What is she doing? She's with me. I just wanted to check on things. The guys in the room are drooling over Gail, including Stu. So you did. Now leave and take your medium up with you. Tatum takes off. Gail slips the camera from her bag, hits the on switch, and holds it behind her, waiting for the right moment. Have they found my father? Afraid not. Should I be worried? Not yet. Interior. Garage. The kitchen door opens and light floods the darkened garage. Tatum stands in the doorway, searching for a light switch. She finds a button and hits it. Brrr. The electric garage door starts to rise. Ah, oh, wrong switch. She hits it again and it closes. She finds another switch. Click. A small light bulb overhead comes on, barely lighting the large two-door garage, leaving pockets of shadow along the wall. Tatum spots the refrigerator against a far wall and heads for it, not seeing the kitchen door. Quietly and slowly closing behind her, steal it, sealing her off from the rest of the house. Tatum stumbles to the refrigerator and throws it open. It's light cast a glow across her face. Crash, boom. Tatum jumps, spinning around just in time to see a cat escape through a large pet door that's built into the garage door. She smiles at her jumpiness. Tatum <laughs> loads up with as many beers as her hands will carry and heads back to the kitchen. At the kitchen door, she struggles the beer, reaching for the knob, but it's locked. Shit. She kicks it with her foot several times. Hey, shit! <laughs> um, no answer. Tatum leans over and with her elbow hits the garage door button. Brrr, it begins to rise. She moves towards the rising door, beer in hand, but suddenly, kerberm! The garage door resets, reversing direction, moving down, closing. What the? Tatum spins around to see the ghost masked figure silhouetted in the dark next to the kitchen door, his hand on the switch. Is that you, Randy? Cute. The figure stares at her blankly. And what movie is that from? I spit on your garage. Just the mask. She'll flip. The figure shakes his head slowly from side to side. Oh, you want to play Psycho Killer? The figure slowly nods. Can I be the helpless victim? He nods again. Okay, let's see. No, please don't kill me, Mr. Ghostface. I want to be in the sequel. Tatum takes a step to move around the figure, but he steps too, blocking her. Hey, cut, Casper. That's a wrap. Tatum moves again, sidestepping the figure, but he's faster and cuts her off. Tatum juggles the beer against her chest with one hand and with the other pushes the figure hard, knocking him aside. <laughs> will, will, you, will, you, will you stop? But as the figure intercepts, lunging forward, grabbing her wrist hard, Tatum stumbles. Beer cans hit the floor, speaking. Shit! Tatum yanks hard, releasing his hold when a flash of silver catches her eye. She looks down, glimpsing a long, sharp blade as it darts for it, cutting into her forearm. Tatum pulls back, horrified, as the moment turns deadly serious. The figure advances on her, knife out, ready. She staggers backwards, holding her bloody arm, backing into the refrigerator, screaming. <laughs> the figure lashes out with a knife. Tatum dodges it, leaping back against the fridge. The figure advances. Instinctively, she rips the top freezer door open, bashing the figure in the face, sending him backwards, reeling. 
Tatum rushes to the kitchen door. Still locked. The figure rises behind her. A true fighter, she leans over and picks up the broken beer bottles at her feet before Ooh, hurling them at the figure's face and crotch. Direct hits. Tatum bolts to the closed garage door. In a panic, he beats and pulls up on it, trying to make it lift. He eyes the figure. He's recovering. She goes for the pet door, dropping to the floor, diving for it. Wedges her upper body through, her head, shoulders, torso, just as her berm. The garage door is activated. It begins to rise upward, taking Tatum with it. it screams madly. Tatum's arms and legs fly about violently as she tries to flee herself from the door. But it moves too fast, carrying her up. She looks above to see where the door rolls back into the garage rafters, just as her neck hits the first beam, snapping instantly. Angela Duck. Wow, what a no. death. Oh, oh my god. Yay, Angela. Angela. Tatum. Tatum. Oscar right there. That was awesome. Interior, foyer, minutes later. It's getting late, and some kids leave through the front door, muttering parents and curfew, etc. The door hangs open wide. Sid moves to close it when Billy appears in a classic fake scare. Billy, Jesus, you scared me. Stu appears. Dude, what are you doing here? Uh, I was hoping Sid and I could talk. If Tatum sees you, she'll draw blood. She won't you guys could go up to my parents' room to talk and whatever. <laughs> Subtlety, Stu. Look it up. <laughs> it's okay. We need to talk. Sid grabs his hand and leads him up the staircase. Randy appears from the kitchen, just in time to see Sid and Billy disappear upstairs. Oh, what's Leatherface doing here? Uh, he came to make up. <sighs> there goes my chance with Sid. Yeah, <laughs> that was gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> Interior, news van. Kidney <clears throat> fidgets at the control board. He hits a couple of buttons, bangs the side of the monitor, and a picture emerges, the living room. The camera is positioned just above the television. On screen, the party is in full swing. Several teens sit right in front of the television. Because of the camera's position, they appear to be staring right into the lens. Suddenly, the van's side door slides open and Gail pops in. Got a picture, perfect placement. We can see everything. Tell me, Kenny, has a cheesy tabloid journalist ever won a Pulitzer? <laughs> 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 Interior bedroom, a large master bedroom with glass doors that lead out onto a balcony. Sid and Billy stare at each other for a moment. Mm. Awkward. So. So, I'm sorry. I've been selfish and I want to apologize. No, Billy. I'm the one who's been selfish and <laughs> self-absorbed with all of my post-traumatic stress. Lost your mom. But you're right, enough is enough. I can't wallow in the grief process forever and I can't keep lying to myself about who my mom was. Billy bows his head quietly, knowingly. I think I'm really scared that I'm gonna turn out just like her. You know, like the bad seed or something. Did he say it? Oh, Sydney. Yeah, I did, I did. Oh, Sydney. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> I know. It doesn't make sense. Sure it does. It's like Jodie Foster in Silence of the Lambs when she kept mm. having flashbacks of her dead father. <laughs> but this is life. This isn't a movie. Sure it is, Sid. It's all on. Life's one great big movie. Only you can't pick your job. Billy moves to her. <laughs> what a <laughs> They embrace. <laughs> Sydney takes the initiative, acting on impulse, kissing him long and hard. She breaks away passionately, out of breath. Why can't I be, Meg be in a Meg Bryan movie? I don't know. Billy nibbles her neck. Or even a good porno. <laughs> <laughs> she stares at him. Her eyes sexually charged. You heard me. <gasps> sure. Yeah, I think so. They smile at each other. <laughs> 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 oh, Interior wow. living room, minutes later. 
The camera sits on the bookshelf, lodged between two knickknacks, completely inconspicuous. The camera widens to reveal several teens watching the TV. The horror diehards. And Angela's gone, but she'll be back soon. Oh, bye. Oh, here it comes, splat. Uh, that blood's not the right color. Why did they do that? It's too red. Here comes another. Predictable. He was gonna bite it. How can you watch this shit over and over? I want to see Jamie Lee's breasts. <laughs> <laughs> when do we see Jamie Lee's breasts? It's not until Trading Places in 83. Jamie Lee was always the virgin horror movie. You didn't show her tits until she went legit. That's why she always lived. Only virgins can do that. Don't you know the rules? When do you see Jamie Lee's breasts? That's a line. <laughs> <laughs> what rule? Jesus Christ, you don't know the rule. Uh -huh. <laughs> Randy hits the pause button on the remote and stands in front of the television, explaining. Have an aneurysm, why don't you? Okay, there are certain rules that one must abide by in order to successfully survive a horror movie. For instance, number one, you can never have sex. Big no-no. Sex equals death. Number two, Never drink or do drugs. The sin factor, it's an extension of number one. And three, never, ever, ever, under any circumstances, say, I'll be right back, because you won't be right back. And stop looking for her tits. <laughs> you want another beer? Yeah, sure. I'll be right back. Oh. Oh, my God. Push the laws, you end up dead. I'll see you in the kitchen with a knife. <laughs> Interior and news van, continuous. Gail and Kenny watch the monitor. The party is clearing out some. A rap at the van door. Gail pulls it open to see Deputy Riley standing, his face all smiles. Sheriff just radioed me. I'm gonna check out a possible lead. Thought you might like to join in. What kind of lead? A car was spotted in the bushes a little ways up the road. I'd love to, if you're sure it's all right. Ma'am, I am the deputy of this town. <laughs> Can I bring Kenny? No, I mean, <laughs> I should probably just take you. Dale steps out of the van, turning back to Kenny. I'll be right back. <gasps> she slides the van door closed and heads for Dewey's patrol jeep. Actually, uh, I thought we could walk. It's not far. Gail appears skeptical, but smiles anyway. She's genuinely smitten by this young guy. <laughs> Interior, living room, seconds later. Back in the living room, the horror fest continues when the phone rings. Everyone ignores it. It rings again. Finally, Randy grabs the receiver from the side table. Hello? Yeah. Holy shit. Randy, freaked, drops the phone, finds the TV remote, and pauses the movie. The others protest. Hey, put it back up. What are you doing? Hey. Uh, whoa, please. Uh, uh, listen up. Listen up. We found Principal Hembry dead. <gasps> Gutted and hung from the goalpost. This steals the room. Complete silence as the new sinks in. On different faces, a moment of devastation, disbelief, and then. So, what are we waiting for? Uh, let's get over there before they pry him down. <laughs> and in seconds, the room is empty as everyone bolts for the door, hooting and hollering. Even Randy, near drunk, alone in the living room, he returns to the movie. Let's just get into the good. News van, minutes later. Kenny is barely watching the monitor. He reaches boredom. He reached boredom some time ago. He finds a bag of Cheetos and chows down when he hears screaming from outside. He peers out the window to see the last of the party kids pile into two cars and race off down the road. He chews a Cheeto slowly. His interest peaked, piked? Peaked. Peaked. <laughs> Exterior, dark road, a long deserted country road. In the distance, a single flashlight beams ahead, the only light in the black night. Gale and Dewey can be heard. So is Dewey your real name? Dwight. Dewey was just something I got stuck with a long time ago. I like it. I think it's sexy. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nah. It's just this town's way of not taking me serious. What about Gail Weathers? I sound like a meteorologist. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. People treat me like the antichrist of television journalism. I don't think you're so bad. Gail smiles. Are all the local boys as sweet as you? Dewey blushes. 
-hmm. He starts to say something when headlights appear behind them. They both spin as two cars loaded with kids come racing right down at them. Dewey grabs Gale and pushes her off the road just as the cars speed by, oblivious to them. In the ditch, Gale lands face up with Dewey right on top of her. Hot. He steals a glance in her eyes before rolling off. You okay? What's that? Dewey looks to where Gale points. He finds the flashlight and aims it at the bush. The tail end of a car is just visible. Looks like the tail end of a car. Dewey helps her up and they <laughs> do it. He shines the flashlight on the plate, but it's already obvious to the camera. Shit, it's Neil Prescott's car. Sydney's father? We gotta get back. Jesus. He's here, what the fuck is he doing here? He's done it. He grabs Gale and they race off down the road. Interior bedroom, minutes later. The sex is <laughs> over. Oh. And both Sid Aww. and Billy are dressing respectively. That post-sex awkwardness. Oh. <laughs> Sid brushes out her hair as her eyes come to rest on the telephone across on the nightstand. It puzzles her as a stark revelation crosses her face. She turns to Billy, who sits on the floor, putting on his shoe. Who did you call? When you were arrested, you're allowed one phone call. Who did you call? No. Sure, if Bert called your dad, I saw him. <laughs> yeah, and when I called, no one answered. Uh huh. I don't still think it was me. No, but if it were you, that would have been a very clever way to throw me off. <laughs> Using your one phone call to call me so I wouldn't think it was you. Billy stands up. What do I have to do? <laughs> what do I have to do? <laughs> <laughs> He makes a move toward her when from behind in a split instant from the open balcony doors comes the ghost killer. Sydney sees the figure immediately screaming. <laughs> Billy tries to calm her, oblivious to the attacks of ghosts. Billy, watch out! Billy barely turns as a long steely blade rises high in the air. It strikes down with force, hitting his chest as blood sprays in the air. On Sydney as crimson red splatters across her face. As the knife is thrust in and out of Billy, who tries hard to put up a fight, but it's useless. He never had a chance. His body falls to the floor, lifeless. Angle on Ghost as he watches Billy's body come to a still before quietly calming, turning his attention to Sydney, who stands numb, scared to death. And only when the ghost takes a step forward does Sydney break. She takes off like a rocket, leaping over the bed and out the door to the master bedroom's balcony. Then eats herself over the railing and lowers herself, letting herself hang as low as she can. Then she lets go, free falling the rest of the way. But in a split instant, the ghost appears, grabbing her wrist in the midair. No. Her body hangs, dangling against the side of the house. The ghost begins to lift her, pulling her back onto the balcony. Sydney jerks, pulls, twists, but the hands have her, hoisting her up. Sydney screams madly, yanking one last time. And herself, she drops no. to the ground, a good seven feet, landing on her back, hitting hard. She grabs at a pained leg and brings herself upright. She looks up to the balcony. The figure has vanished. She bolts. Okay. Interior, living room, continuous. Randy continues to watch TV. He is now sloppy drunk, completely involved in the movie on the screen. No. Scary moves, music swells, filling the room. Look behind you, watch out. <laughs> and if he followed his own advice, he would see the ghost masked figure that stands directly behind him, knife poised. Kenny, in the news van, finishes off a soda, crunches it in his hand. He tosses it off the floor when a movement from the monitor catches his eye. On the monitor, Randy is still on the couch, engrossed in the movie. Directly behind him, the ghost. Kenny does a double take. No fucking way. He watches as the ghost stands still, <laughs> unmoving, knife raised. Jesus, fuck. The ghost takes a silent step forward. Behind you, kid. Look behind you. This kid needs help. Kenny bolts out of his seat and goes for the side door. He slides it open and sticks his head out as a long, sharp blade comes at Kenny, fast and furious, slicing into his throat. Blech. Kenny folds forward. Out the doors, the ghost-masked figure is upon him. The camera pans to the mon monitor, just in time to see the ghost-masked figure turn away from Randy, leaving him unharmed, moving instead out the front door on a 30-second walk to the newsman. Exterior, front yard. Gail and Dewey come running up the drive, frantic. Call for help. Do you have a cell? The van! They split up. <laughs> Dewey rushes inside the house. The camera follows Gail as she rushes to the news van, throwing open the door. Kenny, sell quick! The van is empty. Kenny? Gail's feet slip beneath her. 
She looks down to see a large pool of blood. Dale is frantic. She throws herself inside the van, slamming the door behind her. She starts up the engine, grabs the cell, and hits the headlights when she discovers she can't see out the windshield. Dale grubs at the glass. Sure enough, something is on the outside, blocking her sight. Dale hits the wipers, and blood smears across the glass. It drips down from above. Dale screams as a hand reaches into the open window. She looks up to see Randy, staring at her madly. What's going on? A sheer moment of fear as Gail throws the cell phone at Randy's head, sending him backward away from the van. Gail reverses, backs up, hits the brakes again, just as Kenny's face comes sliding down the outside of the windshield. Eyes wide, face distorted, blood everywhere. Gail hits the gas and yanks the wheel, sending Kenny's corpse flying off the top of the van. Gail spins the van around onto the road, hits the gas madly, gaining speed just as Sydney appears in the middle of the road, waving her down. Gail swerves to miss her, but she turns too sharp and the van veers off the road at top speed, flipping her onto its side, sliding off into the thick foliage. Fuck. Sydney oh. races to where the van lay on its side. Sydney peers through the windshield. Gay's body lay limp and bloody. Sydney cries out, turning, limping to the driveway. Ah. She sees Dewey's patrol jeep with its open door. She goes for it. She hops in the jeep, reaches for the ignition. No keys, shit. Just then, Sydney's eyes go to the front porch. She watches as the front door opens and a figure appears in the darkness, undetectable. Undetected? I don't know. Sydney throws the headlights, illuminating the front side of the house, revealing Dewey standing in the doorway. Dewey! Sydney opens the Jeep door, moving to him, noticing his body slumped, knees buckled, and then his body falls forward, slowly, deliberately, hitting the porch hard. Standing behind him is a ghost. Sydney screams from the bottom of her soul. No! Sid jumps back inside the Jeep, closing its doors, locking it. She reaches over and locks the passenger door, and then she waits and watches as the ghost leans over the Dewey's still body, fumbling with something. Then the figure stands upright. In his hands, he has the keys. They jingle, jingle, jingle. The ghost toying with her, enjoying this. Sydney, hysterical, locks eyes with the figure as he moves to the door. Sydney leaps out, holding the lock button down, making it impossible to unlock. Her face is pressed against the glass, inches from the masked figure. She uses every ounce of strength when suddenly the ghost disappears, dropping down below the window out of her view. Sydney moves to the center of the Jeep, trying hard to listen, but her own rapid breathing, every sound is amplified. Then she hears it, the soft jingling of the keys near the passenger's side door. She pounces on the lock, holding it down. The shadow cuts to the beam of the headlights, unseen by Sydney. Then lock turns on the other side. Sydney leaps over and locks it. She's going back and forth, locking the doors. Her eyes spot the police radio for the first time. She grabs the mouthpiece and hits the switch. What's the mouthpiece? <laughs> oh, help, please! I, oh, I, I'm a stoolmaker's house on a Turner Lane. Please, he's gonna kill me! <laughs> behind Sydney, she doesn't see the ghost figure open the tailgate door of the Jeep and slowly crawl in behind her. The ghost figure reaches out and grabs a hold of Sydney's neck. Sydney, in surprising strength, spins around and attacks the ghost. She holds back against the dash, legs out, kicking wildly at him. Her hand reaches for the door, finds the lock, the door lever. She pulls, it swings open. Sydney falls out, hitting the ground. Sydney, now on her stomach, squirms away from the Jeep, picks herself up to the hands and knees, looking behind her to see nothing. The ghost has disappeared. Sydney's eyes roam the yard, but he's nowhere, completely gone, vanished. Sydney rolls to the front porch where Dewey's body lays. Thinking quickly, precisely, she reaches to Dewey's holster and grabs his gun when a voice echoes behind her. Sydney! She turns to see Randy racing to her, limping. He appears stone cold sober. Jesus, Sid, we gotta get out of here. Sydney throws the gun forward. Stop right there. Don't, don't shoot, it's, it's me. Don't come any closer. Listen to me, Sid. I found Tatum, she's, she's dead, she's been killed. I think Stu did it. He takes a step forward when another voice speaks up. Don't believe him, Sid. <laughs> Sydney spins around to see Stu moving up the walk. He's lying. He killed Tatum and Billy. Who moves closer to Sydney? Stay away. She aims the gun in his direction. His movie nut mind is snapped, Sid. He's gone psycho. Don't listen to him. It's me. He's the one. Sydney has lost it. She doesn't know who to trust. She aims the gun at Stu, then Randy, then Stu. Come on, Sid. Give me the gun. No, Sid. They both move toward her. There's no time. She must act now. Finally. Fuck you both. And with that, Sydney steps back into the house and slams the front door shut. She bolts the door. From the other side, she can hear Randy screaming. 
No, Sid, open up, please! He's gone crazy! Clunk. A noise upstairs. Sydney looks up the staircase into the darkness, her face shocked to see Billy emerging from the shadows, stumbling down the stairs, very much alive. Oh, God, Billy! He's blood soaked and dazed. Sydney meets him in the landing, grabbing him, holding him. I thought you were. I'm all right. Gotta get help. Billy goes for the door. He's out there. Please! Randy continues panting on the door, screaming at the top of his lungs. You gotta let me in! He's gonna kill me! Billy goes for the door. Sydney blocks him. No! Don't believe him! Give me the gun. Sydney hands him the gun. Billy turns and unlocks the door, opening it. Randy rushes in, grabbing Billy, pleading. Help! Help me! Shh, it's okay. Zeus flipped out, he's gone mad. We all go a little mad sometimes. Randy squints, confused, as Billy aims the gun at Randy and pulls the trigger. The blast throws Randy's body against the wall, sliding to a heap on the floor. Still. Anthony Perkins. Psycho. <laughs> Billy turns to Sydney, who stands only feet away, face aghast. Fuck no. This can't be happening. Billy's eyes are on her, unmoving. He sticks his tongue out and slowly licks the blood dry to his feet. Corn syrup. Same stuff they use for pig's blood and carry. Sydney is dumbfounded. Slowly she takes a step back, moving into the dark refines of the kitchen. The outline of a figure appears, standing right behind Sydney. She continues to back up, moving right into the arms of Stu. Sydney spins around, her mouth open in speechless horror. Stu, thank God. Stu stares back at her, eyes wide, lips curled, and a subtle smile as he holds a small, compact, cellular phone up to his face. Surprise, Sydney. His voice sounds affected now, like the voice of the killer. Sydney looks back to Billy, then to Stu, then to Billy again. It becomes all too clear. She stands between them, her mind racing, calculating. What's the matter, Sydney? You look like you've seen a ghost. Sydney stands, trying hard to hold calm. A calm resolve. Why are you doing this? It's all part of the game, Sid. It's called, Guess How I'm Gonna Die! <laughs> Fuck you. We already played that game. You lost, remember? It's a fun game, Sid. We ask you a question. If you get it wrong, you die. Right. You die. You're crazy. The official <laughs> term is psychotic. <laughs> You'll never get away with this. Oh, tell that to Cotton Weary. You wouldn't believe how easy it was to frame him. Yeah, we just watched a few movies, took a few notes. It was fun. Sydney looks back to Billy, unflinching, a determined look on her face. Why did you kill my mother? Why? Why? <laughs> did you hear that, Stu? I think she wants a motive. Hmm. I don't really believe in motives, Sid. I mean, did no have Stu plays along, shaking his head. He takes a knife from his pocket and throws it to Billy, places the gun on the kitchen counter. Nope. And did they really ever explain why Hannibal Lecter liked to eat people? Don't think so. You see, it's scarier when there's no motive, Sid. When did your mom, we did your mom a favor, Sid. The woman flashed her shit all over town like she was Sharon Stone or something. <laughs> so we put her out of her misery. I mean, let's face it, your mom was no Sharon Stone. That motive enough for you? Or how about this? Your mother was sleeping with my dad and she's the reason my mom moved out and abandoned me. How's that? What? Think about it. Maternal abandonment causes serious deviant behavior. It certainly fucked you up. Made you have sex with a psychopath. <laughs> That's right. You're not a virgin anymore. Now you gotta die. Those are the rules. Pretend this is all just a scary movie, Sid. How do you think it's gonna end? Billy signals to Stu as he takes Sydney in his arms, knife poised against her neck. Oh, that's right. This is the greatest part. We got a surprise for you, Sid. You're gonna love it. It's a scream, baby. I'll be right back. 
Stu disappears out into the hall, a low dragging sound. Stu reappears in the kitchen, wrestling with something. You know what time it is, Sid? It's after midnight. It's your mother's anniversary. We killed her exactly one year ago today. Close on Stu. He has a body in tow. He thrusts it forward and it rolls into the living room. Sydney looks fine, down to find. Oh, what do we have behind door number three, Sydney? Oh. Her father, bound and gagged. His eyes wide in fear, very much alive. Daddy! He stares for him. Billy holds her back. Ah, close enough. Stu places the cellular phone in Mr. Prescott's shirt pocket. Guess I won't be needing this anymore. Ring, ring. <laughs> Sydney doesn't respond. <laughs> Got the ending figured out yet? Come on, Sid. Think about it. Your father is the chief suspect. We cloned his cellular. The evidence is there. What if your father snapped? Your mom's anniversary set him off and he went on a murder spree, killing everyone? Except for me and Billy. We were left for dead. And then he killed you then shoots himself in the head. It's a perfect ending. Now watch this. Billy releases Sydney, then turns to Stu with the knife. They eye each other. Ready? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready, baby. Get it, man. Get up, get up. <laughs> Billy pulls the knife back and brings it forward quickly, slicing into Stu. He stumbles to his knees, wincing in pain. Oh, Jesus, man. Sydney screams as blood gushes, <laughs> real blood. Dark, deep red. Stu inspects the wound to his side, then he smiles. Oh, good one. Uh, my turn. He takes the knife from Billy. Don't forget, stay to the side and don't get too deep. Okay, okay, I'll remember. Stu stabs at Billy's belly, puncturing him. Billy doubles over. Oh, Jesus, fuck! Ah, oh, sorry, Billy. I guess I got a little too zealous, huh? Give me the knife. No, no. Give me the knife now! Like a faithful dog, Stu hands the knife back to Billy. Everyone dies but us. We get to carry on and plan the sequel. Because let's face it, baby, these days, he, you got to have a sequel. Billy plunges the knife into Stu three more times. You sick fucks. You've seen one too many movies. <laughs> Billy looks at her, crazed. Oh, Sid, <laughs> don't blame the movies. Movies don't create psychos. Movies just make psychos more creative. Billy slices into Stu again. All right, that's it, Billy. I can't take any more. I'm feeling uh, a little woozy here. Get the gun. I'll untie Pops. Billy moves to Sydney's father. Stu is searching all over for the gun. Aw, oh, Houston, we have a problem here. It's gone, man. It's on the table. No, it's not. Billy hobbles over. The gun is gone. Well, what the fuck is it? Right here, asshole. <laughs> Yeah! Billy and Stu look up in unison to see Gail Weathers, correspondent from Top Story, standing in the front doorway, gun in hand, her body tattered and bloody, hair a mess. I thought she was dead. She looked dead, man. Still does. <laughs> Gail holds the gun firm, in total control. I've got an ending for you. The reporter left for dead in the news van comes to, stumbles upon you two dipshits, finds the gun, foils your plan, and saves the day. Sydney steps forward. I like that ending. In a mad rush, they storm Gail, heading straight at her. She pulls the trigger, but nothing happens. The safety is on. No. Billy charges forward, grabbing hold of the front door, slamming it shut. It catches Gail in the face, knocking her backwards out the door. She goes out. She goes down. Out. Cool oh. move. Billy steps out the front door and retrieves the gun from where Gail lays. It works better with the safety on. <laughs> Off shit. Shit. <laughs> 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 shit. And he turns inside the house to find Sydney's gone. Where'd she go? Stu looks around, staggering now, bleeding heavily. Sydney has completely disappeared. Only her father, bound and gagged, remains in the living room. I don't know, Billy, but I'm hurting, man. Where the <laughs> fuck did she go? Suddenly, the phone rings. Billy and Stu look at each other. Completely surprised, Billy scrambles over to the phone. Are you alone in the house? Billy looks to Mr. Prescott. The cellular phone is gone. Where the fuck are you? 
Not so fast. We're gonna play a little game. It's called Guess Who Just Called the Police and Reported Your Sorry Motherfucking Ass. Billy looks around the living room. Find her. Stu has fallen to his knees. Find her, you dipshit! I can't. I'm bad off, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> you cut too deep. I think I'm dying here, man. <laughs> he throws the phone at Stu. He mouths to him so Sid can't hear. Talk to her. Then Billy takes off for the kitchen. Stu takes the phone. Uh, hello? So Stu, what's your motive? Billy's got one, the police are on their way. What are you gonna tell them? Peer pressure, man. I'm way too sensitive. Uh. Billy flies back in the room, grabbing the phone from Stu. He's completely nuts now, staggering, bleeding, totally insane. I'm gonna rip you up, just like your mother! Gotta find me first, you pansy-ass mama's boy. Billy throws the phone down. He nearly hit me with the phone, you dick! <laughs> <laughs> Stu picks it up and talks into the receiver. Did you really call the police, though? You bet your sorry ass I did. <laughs> My mom and dad are gonna be so mad at me! <laughs> <laughs> Billy starts ripping the room up, overturning furniture in a mad fit of rage when he notices the hall closet. Miles deliriously, heading for it, ripping an odom open as a ghost masked figure strikes from within with an umbrella, the sharp end hitting him in the chest as it fans out. Billy stumbles back, stunned, as the ghost comes at him again. The umbrella lodges in his chest as he goes down. The gun flies across the room. Sydney rips off the ghost mask. He looks at Billy, disgusted, throwing the mask on Billy's now still body. Stu barrels in from the kitchen. Sydney and Stu roll across the floor in a deadlock, fighting. She grabs hold of the television set and tries to pull herself out of Stu's clutch. Her hand finds the top of the TV. The VCR. She yanks on it, gripping it with her hands, bringing it down with force, crashing the VCR into Stu's head. Who drops? She quickly stands over him, tipping the television screen on top of him. His head smashes through the screen, sending sparks and glass flying. Stu is dead. A hand grabs hold of Sydney's ankle, toppling her to the floor. Once again, she finds Billy on top of her. He fights viciously, attacking with everything he's got. She digs her hand into Billy's open chest wound. He cries out, bloody murder. Suddenly a flash of silver appears above his head. Billy has gotten the knife. He rises it high above Sydney, ready to strike when a bullet rips through the floor, striking Billy, knocking him back into the living room. Sydney looks up to see Gail Weathers, correspondent for Top Story, <laughs> holding the gun in a death grip as smoke rises above the gun's chamber. That time, asshole. <laughs> yeah. Sydney sits up as Gail moves to her, helping her. Their eyes meet, a life truce. From behind them, a figure stumbles to its feet. It's Randy. He's okay. What? I never thought I'd be so happy to be a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> Sid and Gail move over Billy, staring down. Randy joins them. Careful. This is the moment when you think the killer's dead, but then he springs back to life for one last scare. Sydney grabs the gun from Gail. She shoots Billy in the forehead. A clean Ooh. and perfect shot. Not in my movie. <laughs> uh. Sydney drops the smoking gun, standing silent over the bodies. A quiet moment when suddenly, a figure lunges at them. No. Both Sid and Gail and Randy scream in an epic final scare. As Mr. Prescott leaps forward, still bound and gagged, <laughs> Sid catches her breath, relaxing. Dad. She rushes to him, untying him. Exterior, front yard, moments later. A flurry of police officers and paramedics swarm the house. Sydney, Randy, and her father are ushered into the back of an ambulance. Gail Weathers, field correspondent, finds off. Stay with me. Hi, this is Gail Weathers with an eyewitness first-hand account of this amazing breaking story. Several more local teens are dead, bringing an end to the mystery of the mass killings that have terrified this peaceful community. It began with a scream over 911 and ended in a bloodbath, just like the plot of some scary movie. Oh, yeah. 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 Guys, I have to pee so bad. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go pee. <laughs> Shit. Okay, go pee. Don't go say pee. you'll be right back. Don't say you'll be right back, bro. Yeah. He's not coming back. He That's just it. wanted to get fingered. <laughs> yeah. Gross. Gross. Wait. Well, guys, Jamie, what did you think of the ending? You never. I think I have seen this movie. Oh. <laughs> Wait, I have a question.
question. Yeah. I thought, I thought that, again, I don't remember anything about this movie, but I thought Dewey was the killer. Am I? No, 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 no. You're thinking of scary movie. You're thinking of the parody in the parody. Oh, no. In the parody, um, Officer Doofy in the end turns out to be the killer. Oh, yeah, and he like peels oh away God. in that like sports car. And... But the, or doesn't he get hit by a car or something? I forget. So what happens is they figure they they copy the end of the usual suspect. Yeah, he's like oh, limping, right. and then like he is like cool oh. with sunglasses. So and the then other Sydney screams, the other screams are all different. They're all different killers. Yeah. yeah. Let's go. Through I, the we movie. we don't want to spoil anything, but. Right. Uh, it's a great franchise. If you haven't seen the Scream franchise, you should watch all of them. There are four of them, and every single one of them is directed by Wes Craven. Yeah. So there you go. Doesn't yeah. do we good. survive? We what? can't say. I, I don't no want to spoil anything. Yeah, no, don't spoil um, anything. No spoiling. No spoiling. They're, yeah, they're no all spoiling. good. I like all of them. There are some that aren't as good, but Scream yeah. 4 was pretty good, actually. There's yeah. something really that's like not in the Ford. script yeah. that um Wes Carpenter added in because he loved Dewey. You mean you so mean Craven. You mean Wes no Craven? no um God no, Wes Craven. <laughs> he, All right, uh, uh, too many names just came at me. <laughs> he he filmed a shot of Dewey being taken into the back of an ambulance to uh, like signify he's alive, and yes, uh, they yes. put it in the film. Oh. Yes, Dewey, Dewey survives this movie. Yeah, in the script, he doesn't survive. But in the final film, they were like, we love him. That's what oh. I mean. They liked him. He's great. Guys, I thought, I thought Brandy was going to be in this movie, but that's what he did last summer, wasn't it? <laughs> huh. Brandy? Um, the singer? Brandy. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Randy. Brandy. No, Brandy. 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 No, I, Brandy. I know what you did Brandy. last summer is the one that has Jennifer Love Hewitt and Sarah Michelle Geller. Which is also right. the fisherman. Oh. It's also yes. Fish yes. Fish. The hook. Yeah, the hook. Yes, there's a guy with a fish hook. Oh God. Um, that's great. But that's that one's it's the, it's still good. good. It's not as good as Scream though. Hey, Jamie and Nick, thank you so much for hanging around to the end. I know you got knocked up a little early, but <laughs> thank you. Just watching from heaven. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like a, except for some of the like dated dialogue, it's a really good script. It's a great Is this a musical yet? It's not a musical yet, but sorry, what was that, Joey? I was gonna say, did you alter any of the descriptions of like 90s stuff when they said a blockbuster large and crowded as usual or something? God, that's so that's funny. So, that makes <laughs> it even really more sad. sad. Even, yeah. 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 It's so sweet. Remember when they used to be crowded? <laughs> yeah. 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 Or when they existed. Yeah, that remember, too. <laughs> guys, remember when people could be next to each other? Yeah. Uh, honestly, oh, I don't. Too know. real. <laughs> like they could stand next to each other in public. Like they go to parties. It's so cute and old. You remember parties? Uh, yeah, that was no. Those are just in movies. Like, just in yeah, movies. parties are just in movies. Now. <laughs> those are movie things. Parties, <laughs> restaurants, and hugs are just a movie thing. Oh yeah, it's like '80s and '90s movies. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you know what's strange is I heard that handshakes are officially done like forever. Yeah. Oh. Oh, like, or one out for handshakes. Like, no, like on forever. Because they, they initially okay. served little purpose anyway, and now we're just going to be totally done with it. They, they're embarrassing anyway. Yeah. Take somebody's hand and they go, oh, that's not a very strong handshake. Yeah. Go back it's to just like, going to be, right. it'll be so strange though, because nobody's ever going to shake anybody's hand ever again. <laughs> Maybe we'll yeah. go back to like tipping, tipping our hats. To yeah, or a sense I'd be bow. all about tipping the hats. Dude, tipping I'm hats all about, yeah, let's bring back tipping of Just, the hats. Yeah. Oh, good, to, good to meet you. Or yeah. you do the lift. You do the lift. Yeah. Or yeah, we'll have, we'll have different hats. Good day. You know yeah. what? The modern handshake is sup. Yeah. So, uh, you do a head uh, raise. Yeah. You do a sensible bow. Yeah. Sup. You know what I hate, though? I hate the, like, the, like a... What? Oh, I hate, I hate that. Oh, like, has anyone done that to you? Like the or the. No, or that's the, what you do to horses, know. John. I know. That's what I. That's why I hate it. That's what but you do to horses, John. To horses. <laughs> or this. 
Or a wing. Yeah, that's bad. I want to bring up quickly derogatory in some cultures. I wore it especially for this. I don't think I showed it. I have Drew Barrymore on my shirt. Oh, that's great. That That wig was was so good. Yeah, 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 Jamie, you did so on point. It It really, I ruined that wig. I can never wear it again. Your hair is (laughs) almost the same, like cut as the wig, though. Yeah, it's just not the same color. But it would be blonde. It's not the same color. Yeah. Would you guys mind if I opened up the YouTube chat and see if there's a few questions on there? Oh yes, a talk back. Sure. Yeah, a talk back. But if you, if if anyone has to go, then um, don't um. Hey man, what do we got to do? Yeah, yeah what's socializing now? <laughs> this, this is, is it. This is it now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Let me see. Can I even open the live Thank stream? God I bought this yeah. popcorn at Costco six months ago. Oh, that is. Oh, yeah. man. That's it. I bought a big thing of Costco popcorn, and it's like the most handy thing right now. This is the most I've ever used. Shelter in place. Right? Yeah. What did everyone Diane. have for dinner? Pizza. Tight. I, I had leftover pizza as well. Oh. There we go. Yeah, dog. Oh. I'll be right there are back. So many questions. <laughs> oh are God. Guys, are you having frozen pizza or you guys order out? Domino's, man. Domino's. Oh, this is, nothing has changed for Nick. This is all AZ's <laughs> Life is um, the I yeah. No, um, I've noticed. I've noticed. People would like to know what is the name of your cat, Nick? Valentine, the cat. She's oh, right here. Oh, Valentine. Let's bring her out. She's a Valentine, they want some questions from you. Okay. Also, people are recognizing the music that Matt's playing, which is great. Matt's amazing. Yeah. Big clap for Matt. Yeah, yeah Matt. Oh, oh thing yeah, on the fly. Matt Stop Dane, it. everyone. I, I watched the movie a few days ago and I like wrote down things. Because what, what else have I got going on? Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm going to get these hooks. I'm going to get these things. Matt was also behind the scenes. He was the music director, as well as the conductor on the guy who didn't like musicals and Black Friday. I think you can see him a little bit in uh, the guy who didn't like musicals. And the guy who didn't like musicals, yeah. yeah. I was right in the little doorway. So you see my <laughs> my weird ass just like smiling and laughing at all the jokes all the time. <laughs> oh, what got you into doing this? Can you guys oh, hear her no. purring? Oh, Valentine. She I hates I heard this. it. I heard it. She <laughs> hates being held. seem into it. She um, hated that. She <laughs> wasn't also, super into it. Uh, we've got a few shout outs for Starry, which is great. Oh, um, hey. I saw a good question. What's everybody's favorite horror movie? I think we've answered this yeah. before, haven't we? I don't know. Have we answered I'm not that sure. before? Oh, I know. Maybe on a live stream. <clears throat> Do we want to go across Cabin in the woods. That's <laughs> yours. I really, I really. Or like sleepaway that. camp. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> sleepaway camp. Sleepaway I really camp. like. Nice. It follows. Oh, it falls is great. Yeah. My. I like I, the bitch. Bitch. Mm-hmm. All oh, right, right. Mm-hmm. That's good. There are a lot of good ones. Um, you know, there's like Carrie. Uh, there's Rosemary's Baby. There's The Shining. There's oh, Scream. Oh, My Shining. Sh- I'm changing. There's <laughs> American Werewolf in London. Oh, oh that's a really good one. My I'm favorite there, thing. The The Thing. Psycho's great. What's the one um, with where she gets on the phone and she says you got three days? What's that one? Oh, The Ring. Final the Ring. The Ring. Oh. So, did you say Final Destination? Final Destination. Dude, that's a fun. Se- that's yeah. a fun franchise, actually. You know, one time I um. I was I went on a plane and I was I it, from my point of view, I sat on the plane and I uh, and I was and it. The plane took off and then the plane started to go down and then it hits the ground. Flames came up, engulfed me. And then I woke up and the plane hadn't taken off yet. Oh, my God. Ooh, and my that God. that is the plot line of. A final destination is somebody uh, dreams that their plane is going to crash right before it takes off, and then they get off the plane and they escape to death, and then death is after them. So uh, it's a fun geez. setup. It ain't right. But I didn't get off the plane, and I was fine. You risked it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was like, I'd rather die than get in trouble by getting off this plane. You know? <laughs> um, people are asking for more streams like this. Nightmare on Elm Street. I want to do Sister Act 2. 
<laughs> oh man, so down. I like the we got to rehearse for the choir moments, though. Ooh, yes. God. Oh, yeah, Friday night yeah. rehearsal. Rehearse. Where? Yeah, that would be a feat. Yeah. That would be a feat doing the the singing with the with everybody on the live stream at yeah, the same time. That'd be amazing. I fun doing it cold. It was really fun to do this whole thing. It was, it was, it was fun. fun. Yeah, this is a blast. It's so nice to see everybody. Yeah, it? It yeah. Nice to see you. Does Tatum really say "Let's rock" the whole time? <laughs> I, I can confirm this. I, yes, I, I don't remember. Phrase. She said "Let's rock." Yeah, yeah. But that's she's cool, not. man. Well, she's a bad super hip. Super All right, let's rock. let's rock. Tatum is the one that. She is the one that upsets me the most, her death, because yeah. Yeah. in the subsequent sequels, they never mention her again. It's yeah. like she is Dewey's <laughs> sister, but they never talk about her. They never go. <laughs> and they're always like, oh, it's so hard for you, Sydney. Your your mother died and all this right. stuff. But nobody ever goes like, oh, remember Tatum? He died. Well, yeah. The garage but door girl? Yeah, but mm. no, they never talk yeah. about her again. It's I'm gonna uh, say Skate Ulrich did a great job because just in the script, Billy is a monster, like for the whole he's, thing. He's <laughs> such a horny guy. Yeah. Yeah. Such a horny monster. Too horny. Like, yeah. Yeah. To be he's like terrible. I think our relationship is PG 13. Yeah. I was watching The Exorcist and it made me think of you. I'm like, what? Whoa. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> Also, He's... adding to the creep factors, they're all 30 playing 17. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah, miss movies okay. like Grace, yeah, where all the 16 year olds. Watching... <sighs> What's the yeah. movie with Jennifer Love Hewitt with the big party? I was watching that with Joey, and they were saying they were 16. Oh, can't hardly wait. Yeah, you're like, you're watching with me? 32, 33. Yeah. <laughs> 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 exactly. When were that we watching great. that together? Yeah, it was definitely during Trail to Oregon. I, I, they, oh. I, I specifically remember you saying, like, Y'all at 30s. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great movie. Yeah. That it's weird, fun it's one weird one that that was ever accepted, that we just were fine with that. I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> I'm still okay with it. Yeah, but it's still odd if you think about it. You go, they're not teenagers. <laughs> That's okay. It, just, okay. Because, um, just because we're getting overrun by questions about it. Um, Woken Boys, the movie is still happening, right? The timeline's just up in the air because of this, right? Because of Corona. Yes, yes. Um, we are still going to make Woken Boys. Uh, it's just that we we don't know when everyone can get be in the same room. Um, so as soon as uh, we'll start to make solid plans as soon as we as soon as we know when quarantine is going to be lifted. And um, we can all get back together because, um, you know, Working Boys, they are putting on a show in Working Boys. So there's like a whole part where they're in a theater and we're going to have to have like over 100 people in there to film that scene. So, um, yeah, we'll we are going to make it. It's just a question of when. Yeah. So there you go, everyone. It's. Not canceled or anything, just no, it's not canceled. Yeah. It nope, we promised it and we're gonna do it, right? Oh, right, yeah. everyone. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Tight. all right. <laughs> it, um, yeah, well, um, thanks, everybody. Well, thanks, Robert. <laughs> yeah. Robert. Hey, thank you, Robert. Yes, yeah, this is so fun. Yeah, well, don't clap. It was so much so fun. fun. Um, a lot of people in the chat are saying, and I would love to do another one as well. Um, you great. put a lot of work into this, Robert. You yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I did a lot. You did. Yeah. Matt as well, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Matt, Matt killed it. But yeah, we, we all killed it. You I'm, I'm, killed it? Thanks, uh, oh. thanks, everyone, for sticking with us. Um, I tried to cut it down as much as I could, but as it's a whodunit, if you start cutting Ooh. too much, it's the ending yeah, doesn't it fast. I thought that was perfect. Like a perfect. Yeah, was, perfect. Yeah, that was. Yeah, we were under two hours. We're good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. But um, yeah. Um, does anyone have anything they want to plug or um talk about? I'll be going to sleep tonight, probably around <laughs> eleven o'clock. Uh, that's going to be happening every night. Um, <laughs> actually, actually, I have a plug. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be uh, brushing my teeth. <laughs> oh, nice, nice, nice. Sweet. Wow. This is big. That's great. That's so huge. And for where, you. what, what network is that going to be on, Angela? Yeah. Um, it's a... uh, my bathroom. It's Ooh, a network. Oh, we're we're to pay extra for that. Yeah, yeah. I have that subscription, though. Mm-hmm. I okay, have it. I can get it. Oh. Yeah, a 90 that. day free trial or. Yeah, yeah. I, I think so. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, perfect. Um, I have a quick <laughs> plug. Um, I'm going to be showering at some point, but I don't know oh. when because I don't know when because time has lost all meaning. PG, right. uh-huh. John. Oh, I have a real plug. Um, a real one. Good. A real one. There's, there's a show that'll be premiering on Quibi that has oh, a yeah, few Quibi. of us maybe in it. Oh, written, by, yeah. uh, oh, written by the Langs. Yeah. So, uh, that's, Quibi. A show that's coming out on, in June. So um, you still got some time before that. The, ad, the adverts on Instagram. I've seen them everywhere. June is busting out all over. Do you think we're going to be locked in our house? Maybe. Do we, are we still going to be locked in by then? Um, uh. I've, heard, I've heard some things that uh, I've heard Would. some people saying it may last until August. Who yeah, says? August word. Yeah, I've oh, heard that. Who says August? Um, I can't even fathom August right now. Yeah. Oh, schools are canceled through June. They can't here. just let I, everybody out May 1st. I need a- names. Who said August? <laughs> I, think the, I think the governor, yo, I think the governor of California even said okay. as high as a year. Yeah. I, uh, Shut uh, up, Jeff. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not joking. Jeff's not, Jeff's, uh, I mean, there's been talk about that in LA. I know they have. Yeah. The, yeah, they the governor of California. School. It's It's been brought yeah. up. Lauren, yeah. you know we're until May 15th now. Yeah, yeah, I know that. I, I'm that caught up. I don't know any of this other stuff. Guys, my hope is that on May 15th or around May, they'll open smaller businesses because um, the thing is for the curve to work as well, some people have to get it. So don't be like, be cautious, you but know? don't panic. Also, if no one gets it, then when everyone goes outside, we're all gonna have to go back in again. Right? Have you guys, uh, what, right. have you guys thought about the the? So there's there's a possibility that this thing was in California as early as November. Okay, we've mm-hmm. talked about this. We've, we've talked, talked about this. Yeah. This guys. has been a deep, it's deep time we, It's time I came clean. I, to I had it. No, do you think so? <laughs> I had it. I don't really think so. It wasn't even yes. in China then. We were I all exposed to you when I was Wait, afraid to ask have you like I mapped the the what, like, what, what everybody's talking about right now is that with Black Friday, when we did a, this show that we just did, half of the cast got <laughs> terribly ill. Yeah. Um, Lauren it, had an extra special something. Yeah. Did I was an overachiever. Yeah. But, but Lauren, <laughs> did you check, did it it check all the boxes? Okay, yeah, just check the symptoms. Here's what's crazy. Okay, it started with a cough, which I was like, this is weird. None of my illnesses have ever started with a cough. Okay. Uh-huh. I had continuous fevers th- for three and a half weeks. They would break oh and then they'd come back. I've never been this sick in my damn life. And you that, got tested for the flu, remember? And then I got tested for the flu. It came back fucking negative, bitch. And what? Oh, I didn't know that. And and so the the doctor, well, okay, it wasn't a doctor. Oh, I could not in to her computer. She's so excited. <laughs> I know. This is everyone the world must know. <laughs> Guys, she crawls okay, through I the screen. Never, Listen. I, did not have, I, <laughs> I did not have health insurance. I could not afford to go to a doctor. So I went to an urgent care and there they told me you have a severe respiratory infection because my flu, my flu test came back negative. And that's what they've been telling everyone who had Corona. They said you had a severe respiratory infection before they knew it was Corona. Guys, we it have was- Corona. Okay. Oh, oh my God! Wait, 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 wait! But only, but only one of the dressing rooms was sick. Yeah, yeah. but dude, we were all around it. But so it was yeah, but everywhere. Not- it yeah, was but, the dressing room that Lauren was in. Everybody in that dressing room dropped like flies. The other dressing room was fine. You score this, <laughs> guys. Holy crap! No, I'm thinking about it, man. I'm thinking about it. Okay, okay. Corey Lubowitz just texted me because he's trolling this live stream. Of course, <laughs> he said, "Don't spread that." Because right, it's he was propaganda. like, "Don't spread this." I know. Apparently, apparently, <laughs> jury's still up, but I'm telling not, you not guys, her. I thought I was dying. Okay. That's, yeah, that's all we'll say is it was fishy. Yeah, it Lauren, was fishy. Don't say that, Lauren. <laughs> I'm sorry, Come but I, on. guys. Wait, but why is that? Propaganda? I got sick in January too, though, and it was the worst sickness I've ever had in my life. And I also tested negative for the flu, and I really oh. think I had it. It is a, yeah. yeah. It's not out of the realm of possibility. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. Apparently, it, it, there was no science behind it. We don't know, but I'm no, just right. like, guys. 
Gail yeah, Weathers I, reporting live. <laughs> I, I, I think the danger behind uh, the the idea that you don't want to s- spread that is that you don't want people starting to think, oh, well, I already had it, so yeah. I'm fine. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. that I, was flu season. So. Yeah. You're right. Mm-hmm. You're so right, guys. I want to make it clear that I just got really excited talking about <laughs> talking about some stuff, and we don't we don't condone the rumor that it was here, but also I don't know. We don't know. Right. <laughs> but also, we yeah, don't know. they haven't found out yet if having it gives you immunity. So even if you have had it, you should yeah. still be cautious. Still stay home. People be are very right. cautious. Absolutely. Okay. Corey yes. is texting me over and over again. Apparently, it's a right wing conspiracy, <laughs> and I'm really sorry for repeating. <laughs> oh my god! Broadcast those texts, please. They have, <laughs> yeah. Stay home. Yeah, I think I the know. only reason why yeah. it's, is it's exciting is because we're so stay home. sick. And it was yeah. so, so weird. Yeah, it was well, something. So you know? Ill. Yeah. Was we're bad. not, we're not like saying that means we're all okay to lift this. No, and we're everything. not. We need no, to no, stay no. at home. As we need to stay at home. We need to stay at home forever. Has, has antibodies, so we can go. On, we can go produce Working Boys, the musical, right? Yeah, now. we can. No, 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 Corey. That's not what we're saying. No, 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 no. <laughs> we're also Robert, do you know if there'll be another one of these or what the next movie will be well i have to ask everyone to confirm oh <laughs> i know i'd like to do a nightmare on elm street um, but, um, but i gotta message everybody and everyone's gonna say yes or no or... you know what you just pick what you want to do yeah brother you, 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 yeah brother we should do a Brady Bunch movie because we're in the Brady Bunch. <laughs> the boxes. Oh, man. <laughs> Brady Bunch. Poor little rascal. Does that look like it? Does it look rascal? like oh, we're the Brady Bunch? I would love that. I don't know what the stream looks like. Oh, wow. You're in the top left for me. You're in oh, the top right, right for me. Oh, it's On good. YouTube, you're in the center top. Oh. Like everyone point in your screen right now to where Nick is. Help. Oh, this is a disaster. Oh, <laughs> that's cute. It's disastrous. Guys, I'm really sorry I said that stuff about Corona. Okay, <laughs> I'm not a right wing. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Mute her right now. No, Mute we her. know. Right you now. only reported the facts. You that's had right. your yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pulitzer Prize. Yeah, yeah. Corey Lubitsch is mad at me now. I'm oh, sorry. Corey. Lauren Lopez says, "Stay home." Yeah, I can see it right now. Lauren Lopez had coronavirus in November during Black yeah. Friday. <laughs> right now. Yeah. Yeah, it was something though. It was something. That's the only time, only time we've ever canceled a show. Isn't that crazy? That's insane. Yeah. I mean, it's rare. And you know, it was on Black Friday. What we had two shows on oh, actual yeah. Black Friday, and the day. evening show we had to. It Jeez. was a cursed day. Yeah. Weird. What a cursed. Day. What a cursed day. A few people are asking what kind of microphone that. Uh, the one that Lauren and Joey has, which I think is also the one that Jamie oh, has. Yeah. Nick and Jamie. Yep. And, Nick and, Buss, yep. and Matt has one. Yeah. This the is a blue snowball. snowball. Blue. Very handy. The voiceover stuff. Is that what you guys use these for? Yeah, bro. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. I gotta get one of How do I sound? This is Matt's. Sound good. Sounds really good. It's only like a hundred bucks. That's but I don't think mine's working because, oh, there it is. Oh, it is definitely. Yep. You're good. Super hello, yeah. Israel. Hello, Brazil. Hello to everywhere in the world. Thank you so much. You hey, guys. Out very nice. From where? Brazil and Israel, I saw. Oh, oh guys. Wow. <laughs> At the moment, we have 2,200 people watching. Oh, That's incredible. That's incredible. So thank you, everyone. Thanks for hanging out with us, guys. Yeah. yeah if oh. you haven't seen Scream, Go watch the actual movie. Yeah, it's so you fun. Know? It's a great film. Now it's nice and dark and scary. Also, yes. go watch Black Friday. Look how scary John is. Oh, yeah. There you go, Corey. Yeah. Go watch yes. Black Friday again. It crossed a million yeah. views. Buy the album. Yeah. We were one for Whitney Murphy, the soundtrack. Yeah, yeah. Get the album. The album sounds great. I would like um, to play that beat by Dick. Number seven soundtrack album. It FYI. was number one. It was number one. It went to, it went to number one on the Billboard Unreal. charts. In Unreal. my dick? In the, in yeah. the... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what's that, Joey? Right? You said, Corey said me and my dick, right? No, no, no. Black Friday went to number one. Oh, 
Oh, I switched in to the, me and my in, dick. He oh, did say me it, and my dick also Pivoted, went to yes. number eleven. Okay, the penis play. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, Matt. Me and my me and my dick was the first college produced uh, album ever to hit the Billboard charts. It's amazing. So, wow. Yeah, that's crazy. Go. Matt, whenever you play music from the shows, I just want you to know people are picking up on it. All the lyrics really? for the weekly jingle. Just oh, jeez. <laughs> Matt, you're awesome. You're so talented. Just... Wait, Matt, did you at all play Red Right Hand during that? Ooh. Did you play Red Right Hand during that? I don't this, think uh... I did. I don't think okay. so. I love that song. I was you just... guys all know the song "Red yeah. Right Hand." It's the cr the scream song. It's also the opening theme song of Peaky Blinders. Oh, Peaky Blinders! <laughs> yeah, so. um, yeah. They um, it became so synonymous with the movie Scream that when they made Scream Three, they rewrote the song. Um, it's called Red Right Hand Two or Red Right Hand the Scream version. Oh. And it and they kind of have um new lyrics in the end. It's real fun. Where it's got that like that bell or goes boom. 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 Yeah. Boom. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's a good song. Boom, mm. boom, 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 boom. Mm. It's a great song. Guys, cool. they're great movies. Yeah. Great movies. Yeah. What's everyone gonna watch now that after this? Is anyone gonna watch anything or play anything or do anything? Um, Next week movies. is the season mm. finale for Lego Masters. Yeah. I'll be watching that. Ooh. Yeah, guys. Mm. Oh, mm. yeah. <laughs> All right. Something. Well, Lauren, <laughs> well, you asking for your bangs. See you later. <laughs> well, yeah, I Lauren, what happened to your bangs? Oh, um, I grew them out. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, so it's a uh -huh. quarantine miracle. Wow. <laughs> I'm really sorry about that COVID stuff. Okay, I just. Oh, I, man. <laughs> That's really bothering me. Lauren's <laughs> gonna feel bad now. I am. I'm gonna think about it all night. All right, guys. Look at Diane. Yeah, there's nothing. Diane. Worse. Oh, look at Diane. 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 Uh, guys, actually, I have something to plug. Um, Diane's gonna start screaming at me and clawing at my skin for a treat in about 30 minutes. If anyone wanna wants to. Tune she, in. Put it in live. Yes. Put it up live. Can we, uh, <laughs> little Diane? Oh, look at how comfy she is. <laughs> Not moving. Asking, I'll leave I have this, to feed my fish. I'll leave the oh, yeah. stream up for a little bit so people can watch if they had to go to bed. But as it's not our screenplay, mm. it's not going to be up forever. That okay. makes sense. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. But I'll give it like maybe like a week, just so everyone has a chance to watch it and get scared by Corona. And then we get sued and we get a letter. And then I'll get sued. I'll get a cease and desist. I'll take it down. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm playing the score, so we're already in trouble. Um. So yeah. I feel like I I just want to ask people how they're doing, but we don't need to live stream that. <laughs> like, let's stop the stream so we can hang. All right. It, <laughs> it, it has right. been it has been a little while. So for everyone watching in the stream, thank you so much for joining us. Hopefully thank we'll you. do another one very soon. I'll let you know as soon as I know. Um and um yeah, and once again, at Tessa Art on Instagram did all of the um yeah. Did that little cutie pie yeah. ghost face? Make oh, sure you get it. Yeah, I art. think it's they. Yeah, and she does some amazing them. Star Kid fan art as they. well. Jackie, Jackie yeah. Horror Show. They do. They do it. Yeah, and Jackie Horror Show, yeah. and um, doing your Meg band. Lloyd and Meg Lloyd as Meg well. Lloyd. Yeah. Oh yes, it seems. If anyone wants to draw us as the Scream characters, then <laughs> you don't have to. Okay, yeah. But it's a fun activity. For what you. movie are we going to do next? <laughs> um, I'd really like to do Nightmare on Elm Street. Someone also suggested Silence of the Lambs, which I think Ooh. we would oh. That's good. Oh, my God. It's not I'd love funny. to be a lamb. Yeah, it's Please not The Shining? Funny. The Shining would be the amazing. The Shining is funny. The Shining that is funny. Ooh, but great. there are only, like, three people yeah. in The yeah. Shining. Oh, that's so this was a perfect thing, and it was I know very we did last summer, like maybe. It was perfect, yeah. like, a big cast. It was perfect. Yeah. 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 Scream was really good. Maybe Scream 2. <laughs> yeah. 
Ooh. Yeah, not? sure. Why not? Yeah. Good, I mean it. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the movie is great. Oh, yeah. Play huge cat. Um, really Jamie likes award winning film. Do Jamie likes Matthew. three movies. <laughs> I this. Jamie likes three movies. She likes <laughs> Buffy the Vampire Slayer, <laughs> Girls Just Want to Have Fun, and the original Hairspray, not the musical Hairspray. <laughs> oh, the original <laughs> Hairspray. Solid picks. Solid picks. Those Jamie, are the only three Andrew? movies Jamie is likes. Andrew there? Yeah. Parts of the Caribbean. living room tonight. No, I took over the living room. The living room is my home. For- mm. I want an Andrew. Yeah. Can't you tell? It's filled with my shit everywhere. Uh, clearly. <laughs> that puppet <laughs> made an appearance. Exactly. The puppet. The puppet. You're- That's the puppet that Nick made me for my wedding. I remember very well. he lives well. with us. <laughs> He's great. He moved in. He moved in. It's hard to sing it. Some people have said it as well. That could be fun. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It's it, got to be stuff. The mini series. And what about yeah. just the book? The yeah, entire read book. The whole book. Read the book. <laughs> book. Read the book. Just do chapter by chapter. Thirty six. Yeah. We just do a popcorn yeah. style. Just, Everybody yeah. takes a different paragraph. Popcorn. We're all, uh, we're all just like gaunt, and we have we, we don't <laughs> sleep. <laughs> uh, yeah. Some people are saying like Halloween and Evil Dead, but I think those are such Evil visual. Dead. Yeah. Super visual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you Scream know, is great. I th- Scream is great because it's the right amount of like, it's got a lot of characters. It's got a lot of fun, witty dialogue in it. And um, it's a little you know, dated. Bad dialogue. It, and it's yeah, it's a little you know? dated. Yeah. But in a fun way. Which is fun. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, yeah. very fun. Like, oh, let's do a bad movie. We got to do a bad one that would be. Sleepaway funny. Camp. Oh, <laughs> Sleepaway Camp's a good movie. Oh, we should man. do The Room. Uh, yes, I was waiting for the that. The Room. Yeah. Well, once again, room. thank you everyone for watching. I'm going to end the stream now, but, um, okay. but uh, hopefully we'll be back pretty soon. Let me see if I can end the live stream without ending okay i can end the live stream now i'll um i'll see we'll see everyone in the chat soon hopefully we'll see yes. what happens uh thank you nick lang thank you john madison thank you lauren lopez thank you joey richter thank, thank you, you matt dane thank you mariah rose faith thank you jamie lynn Beatty. thank you jeff blim thank you angela can you tell me how to pronounce your last Jartana. name Jartana. Jeritana, it's okay, go fast. And, uh, and Corey Doris. <laughs> uh, follow them on all the social media. Thank you, Robert media. Mannion. Yeah. Thank you, Robert Mannion. Thank you, Robert. <laughs>